Hey, Danny everyone. Danny Lira. Hello, hello. How are you, Danny Lira? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Your hair is looking as fiery as ever. Yeah, it looks like um, uh, the... Magma? No, the no? The cheesy balls. How are they called? <laughs> cheesy puffs. <laughs> cheesy puffs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you dipped your, uh, hair. dipped your hair on a bowl. Yeah. You were drunk and fell asleep on a bowl of cheesy puffs. Yeah, so a story that would never happen to me because... Yeah, M or maybe it did. Or maybe it did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we start, Daniel Ira, yeah, I wanted to show uh, oh, yeah. Elena's painting. Amazing. Elena Urcio. So uh, there was a non-issue, to be honest. Yeah, it um, was super fixable. With the uh, paper, little bits of paper that had gotten uh, stuck to the varnish. She told me that she had put like retouch varnish on the uh, painting. Uh, and little bits of, of a um, tracing. Was it sort of a tracing paper or like a vellum no, paper? No, no, no. The thing is that it was like a bond paper. Okay, okay. So um, even though it uh, with retouch varnish or with other varnishes, it, it even though it may seem, and this is a tip for anyone that wants to uh, ship paintings, and oof, I've been shipping paintings for, I don't know, about 15, 18 years. And for this particular project, we've shit paintings for two and a half years. Hmm. Um, so a big tip that I've noticed uh, is that if you um, if you apply any sort of varnish, like a retouch varnish or a um, or a, just a traditional varnish, and you plan on sending something flat, let's say you have a painting that's on a board or it's on a you know piece of paper, cardboard. Um, but you're going to ship it flat, which means that it's going to be a box or an envelope of, of some kind. Mm, it's best to protect the painting as much as you can. That's a given. But what we sometimes do is we put, you know, either a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard or even like bubble wrap directly on top of the painting. A lot of people put bubble wrap with the bubbles facing the painting. And what happens with... Um, with the varnish is that you're going to get all those little marks. Yeah. All those little marks of the bubble wrap, for example. It's sometimes you get like this really nice pattern uh, in the painting, which you can get rid of. You, you, you just need to um, varnish it a couple more times, maybe, just to get rid of that. So that's not, you know, that's, that's not a problem. If you put a piece of paper, which is totally fine, or like a cardboard, even though it may seem like the painting is touched dry, just be careful because... You know, it is touch dry, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be tacky. And because it's going to be tacky and it's probably going to be, you know, in a warm, um, you know, because you're sandwiching it and putting it in a box, it's going to be maybe warm. Um, so all that is going to contribute to the paper or, or the piece of cardboard just really attaching to the painting. And, and of course, you can take it off. You can sort of kind of rip it off. But there's going to be little bits um, that are going to be sticking to the paper the cool thing is that because um if you've done your job well painting it and then varnishing it the the um oil painting is going to be uh impermeable to water so that's a good thing because we can actually take like a a, a rag and just very very softly with a tiny bit of water just get rid of the excess so mm -hmm. that's what i did um i got rid of the uh, little bits of paper and um and it's it's absolutely perfect and with um with elena's blessing i just applied some wax on this painting because the red was very very bright and vibrant but it is it's still going to be bright and vibrant i feel even as the painting is just attached more matte and there's going to be a beautiful contrast again mm -hmm. even if the painting is attached more matte because when it's glossy this painting in particular, in this paper, this paper, it's may, maybe like an artist paper. Um, it's a beautiful paper. It feels really, really beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of texture to the paper that actually shows through the painting. And uh, which is what a good surface should do. You shouldn't be unaware of your surface when you're painting. Because if you are, then what's the point of picking that surface? Um, so... The surface plus the the um, the glossy varnish just makes for a, a kind of busy painting, I would say. And because this is a small painting, 
Uh, I think it's a little too much, so I just put some wax on top of it. It's nice and rich still, but it's even. It's more like, um, you know, velvety. There's like a velvety quality to it. It's not so tacky anymore. So, you know, paintings, um, if you know what you're doing, paintings, sure, paintings are always going to be fragile. You can, you know, if I take solvent and I just dip a rag in solvent and I start scrubbing my painting, it's going to scrub it off. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's going to happen. A painting is fragile, obviously. Any painting painting done today or a painting done you know 500 years ago um but if you know what you're doing these things that can happen for example in shipping which are um somewhat avoidable but you never know what's going to happen in shipping you never know if you were in control of every single step that'd be wonderful but you're putting your painting in the hands of people that you know, throw packages, they sit on those packages, they pile everything on top of those packages. Who knows how they, you know, when they they're put, they put all that cargo in a plane, who knows what that looks like. So it's better not to know almost. <laughs> so I, like I said on, on Wednesday, I think it's a miracle that things, you know, that come from across the world get to us in this shape. It's like perfect. It's like yeah. absolutely perfect. So if you know what you're doing, you can always fix it you can always touch it up if you have to like it's never going to be something that um that is a little too extreme so that it, it can't be fixed even if even our our faye morehouse drawing we were able to save it i feel and yeah. we're happy oh, with we've that we've never told uh who oh i th no i think we did when we showed yeah? it yeah yeah when we showed oh, okay, it okay. it was like uh it's pretty obvious i feel mm -hmm. but um but the painting is perfect. We're super happy. I think I have to say, and this is just me talking, by the way. But That's I think this one is, of your favorites. I think it is. Yeah, I was gonna know? say it's also one of my favorites. I think it is like one of the. I mean, we have amazing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's so many incredibly talented people all all over this wonderful world and world. World. <laughs> all over this wonderful world, and we have been through this project. We have been able to um, to do our little part in trying to support some of these people or at least acknowledge, you know, how good and talented they are. Um, but I don't know. This is this to me is just it's a perfect painting. I feel it's yeah. just perfect. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful painting. Um, and, y you know, maybe in my head I have my favorites. I don't know if it comes to. Um, I don't know if it's cool to just say, oh, this one's one of my favorites because they all are wonderful. I feel that every single piece that we have is, is incredible and tells yeah. a story. Well, that's why we've got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really, but really I don't like know. Them. This is like, this is amazing, I feel. And, and I'm super, super happy. So, yeah. so I'm sorry, but I wanted to clarify because there's people yeah. asking if the painting's yours. No, no, no. So, so this no, is Elena. We, yeah, we talked yeah. about Elena's uh, work on a little bit. We touched upon it a little bit on Wednesday, but... You know, this is as good as a um, as a time as any time to to speak about her work. I had Elena as an attendee in a workshop in a in a virtual workshop. I feel it was last year, maybe. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, of course it was last year. Um, she was wonderful. She's she's a super simple painter, and I'm not saying simple painter as in simplistic or that there's not much to it. No, no, no. Like simple in the most beautiful way. Like she can take very, very mundane things and um, and just charge them with energy, with, with the, like this, this, it's a joy to look at painting through her eyes, I feel, because it's a, it's a very, almost like she's not even trying, you know, type of painting and she gets absolutely beautiful results. And um, we shared her Instagram um, on, on Wednesday, yeah, but we can I do that today. Yeah, and I just again. Elena Burcio A. Yeah, 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 I just share it. Yeah, so please check out her work and support. Again, if you like her work, if you can support her. Uh, we always say this about every single artist that we mention and even the people that we don't mention. And we just say like a, this this blanket statement, but it's a it, it can't be any more true. If you enjoy somebody's work and if you are in a position where you can um, help them out by you know purchasing their work, where you can support them by buying some of their artwork that you that you so much enjoy do so like contact them check their you know etsy page check their web page check whatever they have a storefront 
Um, just look for that. If they don't have that, write to people and tell them, hey, I love your work. Do you have anything available? And if it's within a price range that you can afford, there's nothing more beautiful than than you know that feeling that you get as a as an artist as a you know creator um, when somebody acknowledges that you know your hard work and your dedication and they say that thing that you loved doing I love looking at it mm. I love experiencing it and I want to experience this you know more closely and I want to have it in my home. Uh, I think that's a, a super, super cool feeling. So if you can, we always say so. You don't have to support us, but our message, but hopefully our message is relayed and you can take all this energy that we are trying to, to sort of um, uh, share with people, which is just, you know, if you love something, if you love the work of some, of, of some that somebody's doing, there's a lot of effort behind it. So a lot of years of, of trying things and suffering and, um, you know, dedication. So support them, support those people. If they're younger, and by younger, I mean, yes, in age, but also maybe, you know, in their attempts to be, you know, whatever they want to be. Maybe they started painting when they're 50 and, you know, essentially they are young painters in that sense, but they kind of need that boost or that little bit of help. Um, that's great. I mean, of course, if you want to support more mature artists and maybe those works are a little more expensive, perfect. But um, but I think that that's it's wonderful when you can find young people because it means a lot to young people. Mm. You know, if you give them that little bit of boost when when they're starting out. Yeah, so and when they're starting a market too. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. It just it's it's um it's important. Sí, sí. Gracias, Lindita. Great. So today we're painting. Um, we're painting Fed. We're gonna do a a nice painting of Fed with a nice uh, bright spotlight just shining down on her. So uh, we're we're still gonna work on Yupo, and we're gonna finish this week the same way we started, which is with a Zorn color palette, a four color palette. Um, I. I can you imagine, like, if Zorn is listening to this, like, I'm sure he's, like, tired, but he's probably, like, oh, that's super cool that they named the, this palette yeah. after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's a four-color palette. <laughs> uh, it's titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, and ivory black. I just try to tell people if they don't understand that connection. It's just that this uh, incredible S Swedish painter, he's, he's one of the most talented painters in all of painting history, he chose, by choice, he chose to do a series of paintings. And not as an exercise, but, you know, he chose the simplicity of a very compact uh, palette to execute a bunch of paintings. And even though maybe sometimes he would, he would uh, introduce, like, uh, an extra color in there, for sure there are paintings where he put um, a green, an extra green, because there's no way to make, you know, vibrant uh, high chroma greens with a... That, that you can see in a bunch of his paintings with this particular palette, but in many other paintings, you know, he acknowledges that he was using that smaller palette. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't invent a palette like this. When you think about, you know, titanium white, or let's think, you know, historically, lead white, a yellow earth, um, a very high chroma red where you would have your accent and saturation, which, you know, uh, 500 years ago would be uh, vermilion and you know, bone black, ivory black. Um, that was a very, very, you know, simple Renaissance, high Renaissance Baroque palette. That, that is like core of Western painting, uh, very much, you know, origins of uh, oil painting palette. So it's not as if, you know, somebody in the 19th century said, you know what, There's, we're making discoveries in colors, but I just want to make uh, a, a painting with these colors out of thin air. And you just choose a palette. No, no, no. It's a you know, it's a well documented palette that existed for centuries before Zorn decided to emphasize that palette. But, you know, when he did it, the results are so much more expansive, let's say, and expressive than when, you know, people in the Renaissance were using it because, you know, it was the nineteenth century. So they had learned so much about painting, so, so much about painting 
that they knew how to like push this palette, you know, what they had to do to push a palette like this. Uh, I'm not saying the paintings that Zorn did were more sophisticated than something that was done in the Baroque or High Renaissance. No, of course not. I mean, it's it's certainly commendable what they did, you know, um, in the uh, late like 16th century or 17th century with very little. I mean, they are we owe everything, you know, to those we oil painters. We owe everything to those painters because they really taught us what is at the core of painting, you know, what lies at, at the uh, foundation of painting. So all I'm trying to say is that this is this is something that echoes, yes, Zorn, but also echoes like, again, origins of Western painting and very much, you know, oil painting. So I'm using these and I'm adding like a, a raw umber and I'm using I'm doing that because I have like my illustration origins, which are very also echoing, you know, let's say the, uh, the the manners in which paintings were constructed for centuries also, but they were trying to be very effective. Um, you know, golden age illustration, you would always see drawing, underpainting, painting. I mean, that that's that's what um, that's what the very traditional way of painting was. You know, that that's the approach you would see in every single practice of very traditional painting. Um, in my case, I was I was very close to that through illustration. So I was looking at uh, Norman Rockwell's or Dean Cornwell's where that was super, super evident and I always loved it. And it was always like an earthy underpainting. It always had to be, you know, burnt umber, raw umber. And I always loved that stage of a painting, loved it, absolutely loved it. So for many years, maybe not so much nowadays, but for many, many years, all my paintings started with charcoal drawing. I would fix that drawing. I would put fixative on that drawing. I would have to take the painting out, you know, to the parking lot or wherever. And I would have to spray fixative. Then I would take it back in after like half an hour outside. It still smelled like fixative. And then I would do with terps, um, just a, a regular umber like underpainting. And I used to love those stages of my paintings. Um, but I don't do it now at all, almost. And uh, I guess part of the reason is because I don't use solvent that much. Uh, but what the workaround and in, in all of that is I, I am using medium. And the medium... It's not only here to help us do the underpainting, you know, to get that sort of umbery color, um, you know, as our first layer, but it's also there to help us with adhesion. It's not going to be over the whole painting, granted, but in areas that, you know, are going to be a little more transparent and we need that painting to stick to our UPO because this is UPO. This is a po poly pro poly polypropylene. Pro 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 it's a plastic. Uh, because this is propylene, <laughs> I think. I think. No, I think it's it's polypropylene. Because I'm remembering that someone tried to uh, teach us how to say it. Yeah. And they used I, like the eyes, like. So I'm gonna polypropylene. I'm gonna go like my bet is on polypropylene. I would say polypropylene. Okay. Propylene. But easier for us in Spanish, polypropylene. Polypropylene. Yeah, yeah, that one, no doubt. Um, but because it's plastic. It's uh, it just repels everything. So nothing can, you know, this this layer doesn't absorb anything. So nothing can sink into this layer. So n because it it's non-absorbent, painting is just gonna, you know, stay right on top of the surface, right on top. So if it does that, the way we can help paint just adhere to the surface is to paint it with something that's sticky. Oil is not sticky at all. Oil is horrible at adhesion. Terrible, terrible. That's why varnish exists. That's why resin was introduced into painting. Yes, you know, it is to put like a final coat of protective varnish on a painting and to make colors vibrant and, you know, all that stuff that's like super evident. But uh, initially it's done because oil, it's ter It's a great vehicle, which means that if you put pigment, if, if you put, if you ground, grind pigment, in um, a bunch of oil, that pigment is gonna, you know, spread super nicely because all those oil molecules are gonna let all that pigment kind of spread evenly and nicely and richly. It's amazing, but that doesn't mean that it can stick. So one of the things that oil has is that it just doesn't stick. If you're painting with oil, you know, with a with a oily on top of an oily surface, let's say you've already painted a layer of 
you know, oil on, on your painting and you try to just use oil again, it beads up. You know, your painting actually repels. Your layer of paint repels oil, which is kind of weird because you're like, what is, you know, why is this happening? All I'm painting with is like oil and pigment. That's all there is, you know, on this painting layer. So why am I putting just more oil and more pigment and it's beating up? It's just, it just does, doesn't absorb. And it's not because oil is, is, is non-absorbent, like the layer is non-absorbent. Not really. It's just that oil can't grab onto anything. So it, it tries to grab on and it just beads up because it sucks. It literally sucks in terms of adhesion. Mm -hmm. So we need to help it. And so how did humanity realize that, it, you know, where we can, where can we find something to help oil just stick to um, a surface? Mm -hmm. Well, they noticed that sap on trees, you know, tree sap, which is pretty much resin, um, was super sticky, super, super sticky. I'm sorry, and sap is savia? No, sap, como la, oh, yeah, 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 savia. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so, so the sap of a tree, and sp we use specifically the sap of like certain, you know, pine trees, um, They, they realized, okay, if we mix that with our paint, it's going to be super sticky. Now it, now it can cling on to surfaces, which is great. Mm -hmm. And that's why we started introducing varnish and resins, you know, into our oil paint. So nowadays we have so many more alternatives. And one of the ones that I'm going to use is liquid. Liquid is an, an alkyd medium and it gels up and it's very, very sticky. And it happens super quickly. Not super, super quickly. I mean, quickly in like painting terms which means that it doesn't happen that quickly. But, you know, you kind of start feeling the tackiness after about an hour, an hour and a half, you know, after using it. So that's, that's what we're going to do to give ourselves, like, the best chance to have our painting stick on top of this surface. Okay? So mm -hmm. I think that's going to be it. I really liked what you were talking about. I Like, I really love to learn about um, painting. Yeah. Like, the history that's uh at that yeah behind, behind like the making of yeah 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 those decisions i think people were you know human beings are horrible but we can be so ingenious mm -hmm. we oh, can well. be I so mean, that's observant and so ingenious yeah. and it's amazing it's, that's it's like really, unrefutable really yeah I yeah mean. yeah uh so let's see what everyone's saying So let's say hi, and I'll just start my little block in here. Okay, so first one was Margo. Margo dice hola. Hola, Margot. Hola, Margo. ¿Cómo? No, otra vez. No, hola, Margo. Hola, no. Margo, no. Eh, buenos días, Margo. Eso. ¿Cómo está Margo? No. ¿Cómo está Margo? No, pues, <laughs> no bien. ¿Qué va a decir Margo? Pues bien, no. No puedo estar bien. <laughs> eh, Robin said Friday. Hello. Yes, 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 because we missed uh, yesterday. Tell so, Robin, hi, you Robin. have to tell us, without being super specific, if you don't want to, but how has that uh, trip been, how does that half of your trip been? Been, been? Been, been. Been, been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but is Robin already in Menorca? No, no, she's not. She's... Uh, traveling. She's traveling, yeah. Oh, because I wanted to ask about the weather. So I'm a little bit lost. Well, she can tell us how the weather's been where she's at. Yeah. Uh, Paston said, hello, this is a nice Friday surprise. Yeah. yeah. It's because yesterday we, we couldn't be here, so we want to make it up. Uh, Asif dice, madrugaron. Asif. Sí, mad no, siempre madrugamos, pero... Ah, sí, si es de madrugar, no, desde hace horas estamos despiertos. Sí, pero sí que... Sí, es de que hoy our Painted Lives madrugó para transmitir, sí. <laughs> ¿Qué? No sé. O sea que nosotros siempre yo madrugamos. Creo que no estás despierta, Linda. <laughs> Tú y yo madrugamos, fin. Sí. Pero Our Painted Lives sí. no madruga porque transmiten las tardes. Pero es que estoy hablando de Our Painted Lives como si fuera alguien, no importa. Eh, sí, Seguimos. estamos más temprano acá. Uh, Cody said good morning. morning. Good morning, Cody. Guillaume said hello. And Guillaume said, Nicolás, I posted the RVK show pictures on Discord. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to check them out as soon as, as we're done here. Because if I check them out right now, I'm going to be just absurdly distracted. So, <laughs> But uh, let us know how it, won, how, how it went. How was the show? What did you feel? What did you think? 
Jair Piñeros dice, hola muchachos, hola Jair. Uh, Javi have good morning all, buenos días. Good morning, Javi. Uh, Jose Fail said, good morning. Morning. Um, when I you love were... that we're like, good morning, as if it's like 6.30. Yeah. Like, I, I'll say good morning if it's like maybe before 7. No, I always say good morning. No, until like, like after 7, it's like, okay, people are up. Come on. Like until 11.59, oh. Oh, I say come. good morning. Oh, come on. Morning. No, no, that's like waking somebody up. Come oh, on. it's 12? Good afternoon. That's oh, no, that's no. me. Um, so when you were showing the painting, yeah, uh, of Elena, yeah, Jose Lopez, dice or said, I don't know. He said, "Oh, Goya." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a very obvious. Um, mm. You know th that painting, and you know many paintings that exist. Uh, today in painting history and are part of painting history it would not be if it wasn't for that dog. Yeah. Uh, Jose Fails Jose said Fails. Aileen Miles wrote this dog memoir called memoir, yeah. Afterglow. Oh. Uh, it's great. It opens with the writer receiving, receiving being served papers from the dog's lawyer and she's reading this letter looking at her dog. <laughs> Then another chapter is a play featuring the dog as a main character on a talk show with puppets. What? I sent Danny and Nico a link to Miles reading it on YouTube. I'll share the same link on the Discord. Oh, I want to see it. It sounds interesting. That's super cool. The only thing I can... Um, I mean, but that sounds really funny. That, so I'm sure that's going to be a fun read. The only... I mean, dogs in literature... I remember a chapter... Of um, Mi Nombre Rojo, My, my Name is Red, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, one of the chap, one of the chap, more than one of the chapters is as the dog, the, like the dog's point of view. And it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, but I don't know if I can remember any other, you know, voices of dogs that, that you're kind of um, aware of as a reader. Mm, maybe well, I'm missing something. Maybe I'm I'm misremembering or or I can't forget about I can't remember others, but Well there's of course I googled. Dogs in literature. There's what, what top ten dogs in literature. Yeah, but dogs as characters. Dog, yeah. Not well not only dogs as characters, but that you can actually kind uh, of they hear have a voice, like, yeah. You can he yeah, that they have a voice, exactly. Mm. So books written from dogs point of view. Yeah. Let's see. I'm What sure there's a ton. I mean, I'm I'm I only I only remember that um Pamuk uh It says chapter. Number one, A Dog's Life, the autobiography of a stray, A Dog's Tale, Timbuktu by Paul Oster, a uh, fluke by James Herbert, The Art of Raising in the Rain, uh, by Garth Steen, Stein, Stein maybe, Stein, yeah. <laughs> I love that I always go for the two that are wrong, and I never think of the one that's right, oh, it's okay, I, th I think humanity, we should never be offended if somebody <laughs> doesn't get our name right, no, I mean, it's like never, like, bad intended, yeah, so. yeah, and it, Particularly if it's on a, you know, somebody from a different country. Yeah. So. Uh, and even if they're from your country, because sometimes you think you're reading correctly the uh, last name, but there's like different pronunciations to the same last names. Yeah. Sometimes. So. Uh, a dog's purpose. Although Nicholas Urin. No, I that's. I mean, my <laughs> teacher, that teacher that I had should have known. I mean, should have <laughs> been like. No, it can't be urine. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they thought, I mean, uh, he's from Colombia, so. Yeah. Maybe. They're weird people over maybe. there. Maybe. I mean, because, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. No. Uh, <laughs> let's see what people are saying. Mm. Ricardo said Scooby-Doo, the icon. <laughs> uh 
Jose Fale said the animals' points of view were nar narrated by voice actors. Oh, that's cool. Um, y Ricardo decía, hola chicos, abracitos y abrazotes, y mandó emojis mismo, de la campana. Entonces... Mm. Muy bien, muy bien. Eh, Ricardo ya es el embajador de la de campana. De la campana, sí, le tocó. Sí. Después del shame que le mandamos, le tocó. Eh, Kakeiro dice, Oli, buenos días. Hola, Kakaito. I was thinking of doing a larger head. I think I'm going to do a smaller one. So, smaller than the one you're doing yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah, because the top of the head and the width of the hair, I want I want those to, um, to fit. Mm-hmm. And they won't fit with this size. So you can't quite wipe. This is actually kind of interesting. Um, Yupo does stain. It may be non-absorbent, but it does actually, you know, stain quite a bit. So. But remember the problem I had with um, uh, gouache? I think it was gouache. Yeah. I don't know if it was gouache or acrylic gouache. But I it lifted know. up and it was like white. Yeah. Like pure white. Yeah, so and that's like just bad adhesion. Yeah. Period. And then I just, uh, I mean, I wasn't going to use that paper, so I just use it for experimenting. Yeah. And I saw that I could use uh, an eraser. Yeah. And lift up parts and it would be like white, like perfect white. That's amazing. So that was, yeah. Great hack. I found it. So this lifts, but... So it's really nice for doing wipes, but I think it does stain. So I don't know if you can reach the lightest light of the paper. Would you want to it. try with the eraser? No, 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 no. Because for oils, it just, it'll like, I ruined the eraser, I feel. Okay. It'll get super, super dirty. Um, your mom said, wonderful today as always. <laughs> My mom is like, I've done this. Oh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. No, because she loves She's you. She's incredible. So. Best mother mm, ever. So, Iván dice, esa paleta está peor que la mía, ya me toca rasparla porque se le secó el liquid. Esta paleta está um, salvaje, sí. Eh, Maux MC dice, polipropileno es una excelente palabra. <laughs> sí. ¿Sí? Sí. Todos los... Lo es. Uh, Cody Winicky said, time for class. It was nice to hear you guys briefly on Friday morning. So good luck, Cody, on your class. Yes, good luck. Uh, uh, have an awesome, awesome day. Uh, Jose Fail said, my partner and I used to make epoxy resin art. I especially like the blend of wood and dyed epoxy. Epoxy, epoxy. Uh, you're like getting exotic <laughs> today. Uh, which we would... Unnecessarily exotic. <laughs> Epoxy. That's me always. Always. Uh, which popcorn. We would <laughs> well, hot dog. <laughs> which we would fashion into rings. Oh, very nice. A uh, Z Riot. Ah no, S Z Riot. Mm -hmm. Dice, se puede ver en algún lugar el video de 24 horas pintando? No. Cuéntales qué pasó, lindita. Eh, lo que pasó mm. es que nosotros no sabíamos que hay un límite de... ¿12? De 12 horas, creo que era, si sí, es que no, no, me, no, no sé por qué pensé que era 10 horas, pero sí, de pronto son 12 horas, es el máximo que YouTube guarda de las transmisiones. Después de la transmisión a uno siempre le preguntan, ¿quiere guardar el video o ya, borrarlo? O sea, se transmitió y se fue. Y nos enteramos en medio de la transmisión... Y dijimos, no, pues arriesguémonos a seguir las 24 horas porque no queríamos hacer un nuevo link, un nuevo todo. Y porque también nos parecía chévere que la gente que estuvo ahí en ese momento estuvo. Entonces es como la leyenda del... ¿La leyenda? La leyenda de la transmisión de 24 horas pintando. Pero sí, no, no está... Que fue cierto. Ya en internet, ¿no? Es cierta. Incluso si ustedes cierto. lo buscan, es chévere porque sale el thumbnail del video... Y abajo donde dice el tiempo, dice 24 horas, pero no se puede ver. Entonces, eh, solo lo que, los que estuvieron ahí eh, para contarlo. Pero cuando lo repitamos este año, 
<risa> Van a ser 48 Va a según ser tú. Una cosa... De no. nuevo, ¿Otra vez legendaria? Pues sí. <risa> sí. Toca ver, toca ver, toca ver. Eh, Roma Bell said hi. Hi Roma. Hey Roma. Julia dice, hola, me encanta cuando transmiten temprano. Hola Julia. Hola, Julia. Eh, Julia Marina. I don't know. So maybe... Ah, bueno, es en español. Yeah. De pronto me pueden corregir. Dice Cecia. No, es Z-E-C-I-A-H. Cecia. Eh, dice, buenos días. Aprendo mucho de tu canal. Muchas gracias. Eh, Fabiola. Fiabiola Artist. I always say Fabiola. I'm sorry. Mm. Fiabiola Artist said interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um... Peanut Zero Zero said, your hand tattoo is very interesting. Love your painting you. so much. Thank you. Uh, Jose Fail said, when I, grew, when I grew up in the U.S., it was Milo and Otis, a movie about a kitten and a puppy who got lost on a farm. I know. I remember that movie. Uh, Guillaume said, actually, it was fun. Talking about the RVK uh, show. Yeah, 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 please. Actually, it was fun. The gallery was closed when I arrived. I was devastated. Had to phone the galleries and tell her I came from France. And she was kind enough to let me in. So I had it all only for me. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Jair Piñero said, people get my name wrong all the time. I actually was very surprised when great... And grateful when Nico read my name for the first time and got it right. Oh, Jair is super popular here in yeah. Colombia, though. And Piñeros, too. Yeah, yeah. So. Those two are, are super easy for us. Um, eh, soy, oh, soy, I'm so, oh. No, I'm just torn. Why? If I want to, because I love the cast shadows of the hair. Mm -hmm. So I would love to paint those. But if I paint all... If I want to paint all of the cast shadows of the hair, I have to paint a significantly smaller portrait. And on this size, I would like to paint this size of a head. So I'm torn between do I want the, you know, cast shadows, the, the nice kind of contrast of the cast shadow, or do I want the size of a portrait in this particular you know, kind of shape. And I don't know. And what if you change the proportions of the length of the hair? Yeah, I could lie. I could kind of lie. I Or if you add um, a part of Yupo, like a... Oh, but Yupo is... Like the ones we've done? Yeah, but that would make for a soup, like longish... I don't know. No, I'll make it work here. But okay. it's just... It's, it's my thing always that I just have one size... And I'll have an idea of what I want. Like if it's a if, if there's a person in it, like I'll say, oh, I want the portrait to occupy this much. And then I realize, oh, no, nothing else fits. And uh, it's kind of annoying when that happens. Like I, I always prior prioritize my portrait. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not sure. I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go slightly smaller. And if you go a little bit up? I think it's, no, no, because there's like um, Fer's um, balaka. Oh, yeah, the, like the, ooh, how I do you call it? I have no idea. Headband. Headband? Yeah. Uh, thank you. You're is, welcome. Um, I mean, my English is here oh, to save you. please. I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't say hadband. Hadband? No, <laughs> well. Well, there's time. Uh, yeah. We have time still. Uh no, her, I want her headband to fit. Okay. Sometimes I don't mind cropping out th the head outside the frame, which is kind of nice, actually. Mm -hmm. But not for the... I could crop it. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I just have to make it smaller, but I think I'm going to make those, those decisions while I'm painting, um, which is kind of cool, actually. Too. Soy lo que parezco, dice... Hola, yo he trabajado con Yupo por años en acuarela. El papel tiene Qué un chévere. sustrato que permite trabajar y es 
absorbente, pero se remueve fácilmente al ser borrado. Mi pregunta es, ¿cómo se comporta ese sustrato que permite la adherencia de la pintura con los óleos? No. Pero el yupo no... Pero de pronto no estoy entendiendo muy bien. ¿Cómo, es la pre... ¿Cómo se llama la persona? Soy lo que parezco. Soy lo que parezco. Es que no... De pronto no, es... no estoy entendiendo como lo que está tratando de decir, pero me, me disculpo eh, de antemano si soy yo el que no estoy entendiendo. Sustrato es un soporte. Sustrato es, si yo pinto sobre papel, el sustrato es el papel. Si yo pinto sobre cartón, el sustrato es el cartón. Si yo pinto sobre tela, el sustrato es tela. Sustrato es, como le decimos, digamos, técnicamente, al, al, a la superficie sobre la que estamos trabajando. Entonces... Cuando uno dice el sustrato, este sustrato es, es, es impermeable. O sí, sea... sí, sí, porque es que eh, eh, soy lo que parezco, estaba diciendo... A ver, hola, yo he trabajado con Yupo por años en acuarela. Ay, ah, ya entendí, ya entendí. A ver. A ver, hola, yo he trabajado con Yupo por años en acuarela, punto. Sí. Y aparte está diciendo el papel, o sea, no el Yupo, sino el papel, supongo. El papel tiene un sustrato que permite trabajar y es absorbente, pero se remueve fácilmente al ser borrado. No, es que ese, sí, es, ahí es donde, es, esa es la parte, es, soy lo que parezco, que de pronto no estoy entendiendo muy bien. Entonces, el sustrato, o sea, la pintura, la pintura puede ser levantada del sustrato. Esto es lo que yo acabo de hacer, como levantar la pintura del sustrato. Eh... Pero el sustrato, no, el sustrato es el mismo. El sustrato en este caso es un pedazo de plástico que no es absorbente. O sea, y, y lo dice el mismo papel, lo dice la, la, digamos que una, la manera técnica como lo describe la compañía. Y pues uno trabajando se da cuenta rapidísimo de lo cierto que es. El, el, la superficie se tiñe, yo por eso decía, se alcanza a teñir. No creo que eso sea adherencia ni absorción pero se tiñe eso tiene que ver más de pronto con la pintura, el pigmento mm, pero el papel o sea, el papel no es que pueda tener una calidad de, de absorbente y por alguna razón volverse no absorbente si uno le hace una imprimación al papel o sea, si yo estoy poniendo, aplicándole cosas eh, digamos exógenas a mi soporte se puede volver eh, se puede volver eh, no absorbente, pero eso, o sea, yo puedo tener un papel y ponerle tantas capas de gesso encima, de gesso acrílico encima, que ya no queda nada del papel, ya yo solo voy a estar pintando sobre el gesso y el gesso es muchísimo, el gesso acrílico es muchísimo menos absorbente que un papel que tiene fibras, pero es que esto como no es papel, esto, es, esto no tiene fibras, no tiene nada, esto es un pedazo de plástico. Soy como... lo que parezco, dice... Sí. Ok, sí, en este caso el sustrato sería la superficie, pero tiene una película para ser más correctos. Ese plástico del, del tipo está en capas, no es homogéneo, y la última capa tiene una película que permite la absorción. Si ese papel tipo pierde, si ese papel tipo pierde esa película, se vuelve un plástico como cualquier otra, hablando del yupo. Mm. Mm. Bueno, yo... Hasta ya no, no sé tanto, ¿no? No sé, yo no sé de lo, yo no sé los distintos tipos de plástico, uf, ni los podría categorizar, honestamente. Hay tantos plásticos en, en, en la industria que yo no, no sé químicamente cuál es la diferencia. Tampoco conozco si el papel Yupo tiene un recubrimiento, que yo creo que eso es lo que usted se está refiriendo de pronto, y tampoco conozco cómo haría uno para quitarle ese recubrimiento. Pero yo pienso que ya son como vueltas extras. O sea, desconozco como todo ese proceso. No sé qué lo eliminaría. Yo no sé qué, qué diluye o qué eh, podría quitarle como esa, esa capa que, que me dice usted que tiene eh, esta lámina. Mm, no sé, no lo sabría, no le sabría decir. Sé, supongo que ningún solvente que uno utiliza en pintura o ningún solvente... Eh, tradicional la elimina porque si no uno estaría pintando y se levanta el papel se levantaría eso yo pensé que era un plástico yo honestamente pensé esto es un plástico esto es una lámina de plástico como uno piensa en una lámina acrílica eh, que pueda tener un acabado 
de pronto lo acaban en calor para que sea como mucho más liso o... Pero, pero es que desconozco la, la verdad, yo desconozco la producción, cómo es el proceso de producción. Si se pueden meter ustedes también ahí y nos pueden como instruir ahí al respecto, pues muy sí. agradecidos nosotros Mira, también. encontré esto. Dímelo. Dice, you post structure, pero es que tiene como una gráfica. Entonces en el centro mm. está la base layer sí. y hacia los lados hay surface layer. Digamos, adelante, atrás. Uh -huh. O sea, es un sándwich de tres capitas, como Ajá. nos estaba diciendo... Soy lo que parezco. Sí. Le voy a eh, empezar a decir soy. Eh, dice algo que dice micro voids. No, ni idea. Y dice strength comes from the base layer while the paper-like characteristics come from the surface layers. You poise a synthetic paper made up of three layers, a base layer and a surface layer laminated to each side. Mm -hmm. The base layer gives you the strength While the stretching process provides the surface layer with innumerable microvoids, microscopic pores, which make it very wide as well as lightweight and suitable for handwriting. Mm, menos denso, lo que acabo, lo que medio entendí. O sea, mm -hmm. yo entiendo como por sentido común. Sí, pero más fuerte en el centro y las dos, la, 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 las dos caras son más suaves, mucho más, que son más espaciadas, menos densas, y entonces para que sea como light, para que pueda ser como, como que no tenga tanto peso, eh, mm -hmm. pero, entonces, sí. pero lo que pero entiendo es, es que de pronto lo que dice soy lo que parezco es que eso es como micro voids, o sea, lo que están diciendo es, o sea, si uno coge una cosa de plástico y va a escribir con lápiz, Sí, no sí. se adhiere, entonces mm. de pronto esos microvoids son los que hacen que se pueda adherir y de pronto soy lo que parezco se estaba eh, refiriendo a eso como mm. la absorción sí, o sea, es, es más de pronto no es una absorción sino como adherencia, microscópicamente es como si fuera una lija, un papel lija que le da una textura debe mm -hmm. ser como microscópicamente debe ser picos y valles chiquitico, o sea, de nuevo, microscópico porque uno toca esto, no se siente lo más liso del mundo pero de pronto microscópicamente tiene eso para que ayude a agarrar eh, las cosas a la superficie mm. ya, ya, creo que creo que ahora ahí nos estamos todos entendiendo a ver, y hay otra parte que dice just like paper, Yupo has a grain the grain mm. runs along the first dimension listed in the label So make sure you, sh you check this out before you use it. What? Many Yupo sheets have a short grain. However, some products are prone to fanning, fanning out. Inaccurate regis registration have a long grain. Wow. No. <laughs> yo creo que he usado la parte de adelante o de atrás o el... Yo no, no le he visto como... Mi, mi sensibilidad no es tan alta como para mirar si hay un lado que tiene un tra una... Sí, pero no, 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 acá dice... Uh, is there a right or wrong side to the UPO paper? And it says, according to Legion Pager, technically the front and back surfaces of UPO are identical. Okay, so that's kind of weird what they say then about the grain. That, that there's... The, the grain runs in a direction. Well, not weird, it's just that I... I would have thought that it was like one side that has like the grain as paper, one side has has like a grain and the other side wouldn't. But um I don't know. Mm, so I'm noticing that I don't know nearly enough of this surface. So um, that's a good uh good way of learning today. So soy lo que parezco dice. So no sé por qué dije so. Um Gracias, maestro. El recubrimiento se pierde cuando se trabaja con medios abrasivos, como se trabaja en aerografía, cuando se usan borradores eléctricos y ese tipo de cosas. Mm, o sea, físicamente se puede levantar. Entonces eso fue lo que pasaba cuando yo usaba el borrador. Pero, Por eso volvió a blanco, blanco. Porque levanté la capa en la que se había crees? adherido el wash. Pero yo creo que es que el wash no se adherió. O sea, yo creo que es que sí. eso es lo que pasa. El wash se queda es ahí flotando un poquito. Yo honestamente creo que eso fue lo que te pasó, no creo sí, que sea sí, sí. más complejo. No, pero a... que es, que, es que después traté con un borrador para mirar sí. y volvía al blanco blanco también. Entonces de pronto 
Lo que pasó cuando se me levantó es que no se había adherido, pero después con el borrador, pues de pronto levanté esa película. ¿De pronto? ¿Será? ¿Y no, no aguanta una borra? No, porque yo he visto gente haciendo en Mylar y en esto eh, dibujos de carbón. Uh -huh. Y donde hace dibujos de carbón que los levanta con limpiatipo. Sí, sí, sí. Imposible que uno va a borrar con limpiatipo y se levanta la superficie. Es que, es que en, en aerografía los borradores no, son eléctricos, ¿no es cierto? Esos borradores son fuertes, o sea... Como si uno estuviera taladrando, como un, un mototool, pues. Como una lijita, pues. Exacto. Y soy lo que parezco, dice, sí, qué interesante el tema, la película es delicada y con la oración eh, se pierde y deseaba saber su experiencia con solventes tradicionales. No, no pasa, no. O sea, de lo que yo recuerdo de haber pintado, a ver, en Yupo no tanto, pero en Mylar antes, que son parecidos, parecidos, eh, no, no, no. En ningún momento sentí que se estaba levantando, que, que la superficie cambiaba, no. Espérate que la cámara la tengo mejor. Sí, creo. Ah, entonces lo usa como para aerografía, qué chévere. Eh, Irwin Peralta said, I didn't know that about the grain. Now uh, we're all learning here. Yeah. And there was, this was information that I got from upo.eu okay. in the section of production. So Aren't I guess... Are American? I have no idea. Because it says, Upo is a synthetic paper made mostly from propylene <laughs> film. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> to which inorganic fillers and small amounts of additives are added. In principle... The film is formed while creating microvoids by stretching a biaxially. Stretching it biaxially. Okay, yeah. The most distinguished feature is its multi layer construction, which consists of a base layer and paper like layers laminated on either side, whose thickness can be adjusted to provide products ranging from thin to thick. Yupo's unique production method is patented around the world. Okay. Um, so, maybe here? Maybe I can get more info. To no, but I think that that's, we're, you know, that's pretty basic, but it's, uh, it's very, it's good info. It's very, very good info. I for, I, I, for example, didn't know that it was, um, I thought it was just a single layer. I thought it was just like a thin piece of plastic. I didn't think it had like a core and two sides. So that's pretty interesting. It's, no, no, no. Because I was thinking it's maybe like the uh, Legion Yupo different from the one I'm reading, but I don't think so. No, I think Yupo is a brand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a... It says here... Because I see in the page of upo.eu, uh, they use it more for, like, products. Like, like products. for... Like what type of... Like for the packaging of a product I see here. Okay, yeah, sure. And it says, uh, Upo is 100% outdoor resistant, UV resistant... Water resistant and scratch resistant, which I don't know. I, I don't think they're talking about only the Yupo paper because they were talking about being able to get it in different thickness. Right. For different products. So. Right. Yeah. So it lends itself perfectly for like packaging and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it says flexible, tear proof, super smooth, 100% three, three free. Tree, tree free? free, three. Yeah. And tree free. And, uh, and three. Tear proof. I, th mm -hmm. I think it was. I thought and you tear were proof, yeah. Maybe. Maybe you get frustrated. Oh, I no said tears. tear proof. I'm yeah, sorry. No tears tear when you paint an ugly painting. Uh, chemical. I mean, and if it's water resistant, is it's tear proof. So That's 100% true. You can cry over your bad painting. <laughs> it's going to slide off. It, But I don't know because it says chemical and stain resistant. Stain? Yeah. Well... Maybe you could lift it with something. With solvent, maybe. Mm, heat resistant from 
minus 80 ce eh, centígrados. Degrees. Degrees. To 70 degrees. Mm. Celsius. Wow. Mm. That's, a, that's a pretty big range. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, good facts. <laughs> a ver, soy lo que parezco. Dice, la experiencia que he tenido con la acuarela, unas 50 piezas. El papel se deja borrar tanto el lápiz, gouache o acuarela, pero a veces la película se pierde y no es absorbente ni se fija nada encima. Uh, Fabio, Fiabiola said, Danny, my name is Fabiola, so you're right, but I have chosen this silly name on YouTube years ago, adding an extra I, and now I don't want to change it. Oh, perfect. No, I like no. it. I think it sounds fun. Don't Fiabiola. Ever, don't ever change it. And it's, uh, it's good for me to give it a... Like a twist with my pronunciation. Fiabiola. Okay. No? No? Yeah. What's their, what's their last name? No, it says Fia, Fiabiola Artist. Okay. Um, Leslie Cavazos Garduño said, dice, live en viernes, yay, happy Friday. Hola, Leslie. Mm, Tani said, what is Yupo? Is it the canvas that you're painting on? So it's not a canvas. No, it's a it's a plastic sheet. Yeah. We were trying to decipher a little bit more about it. Yeah. Um, so do you want to link their their product like I mean, I mean we're not uh, sponsored in any way, so this is just for you know, hey, this is what we're using. But um you know what I can do? I could put the uh, image of the um, block of yeah. paper in in the live. You think that's okay? I think it's better to just post like a link and that's, that's it. Well, but if Instead I post the like link... Okay. Yeah. I don't know. This is for information purpose. Because our Painted Lives is uh, sponsor-free. Yeah. So... Mm. So, there you go. And Tani also said, I'm sketching alongside you guys today. Oh, awesome. awesome. What are you doing? Um, Julius said hi. Hi, Julius. Hi, Julius. Uh, Irwin Peralta Art said, I love the brush strokes you get with oil on your bow. Yeah, I like them too. I just have to stick to them. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that if I had like a soft round, I could kind of model this. But um, but I'm trying to see how much I can get out of just laying, um, letting things be, laying other strokes, and just being somewhat definitive with them. So, mm, I haven't seen they have different like types of yubo in the legion but it's thickness right that's the only thing that changes no it says yupo medium which is the one you're painting on yeah yupo translucent oh that that would be like mylar and yupo heavy so yeah mm, it says because you know that the one i used that i did use for a long time was mylar mm -hmm. and mylar is um it's not uh, it's obviously not 100 percent transparent but it is m far more transparent than this. Y you even have to be aware of how transparent it is and maybe back it with like a white piece of paper. Oh, because the light so that, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you put it on top of like, I don't know, like raw masonite or something like that, it gets darker immediately. So... Yeah, so I just uh, looked for an image. Yeah. And I'm, no. Any image in, you know, anything? No, no, no. Like, like the Yupo. Singing pig. <laughs> okay. The Yupo translucent to see if uh, I could see a comparison with the paper you were talking about, the Mylard. But I don't see it. Um, I'm sure there's videos of that. Pretty sure. There must be like some videos comparing Yupo Mylar and with Mylard. I, I think so. If not, we have to do one. We'll be the first. Yeah. Go viral. Maybe that's the one that... Buy a yacht. Uh, make, <laughs> buy a yacht. Yeah. 
Like in Bogota. One. Like a little one. <laughs> For like what? That, like that like size. Like a, a paper one. Yeah. <laughs> like that size. And you could just take it across the painting. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um. No. Oh, by the way, thank you for the uh, suggestions on the We Crashed. We Crashed. Oh, yeah, we're seeing show. it. Show, we're watching it. So we're chapter three. Yeah. So so no we, spoil no yeah. spoilers, although I, I do feel the title spoils the future of the company. And for us, it's a spoiler. It's a, it, I mean, it, it is quite a spoiler because we, I think we both, I mean, you know, you knew more than I did. Well, I knew that you recognized we work the company. Exi existed, <laughs> you recognized yeah. the name. I had no idea that that was a name. But I had no idea about, like, the owner, like, the creator oh, of it. Oh, nothing. No, it's fascinating. Nothing. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I even have to say that at first when I see it, I saw it here in Bogota, I thought it was, like, a Colombian thing. I thought it was just, like, a tendency. Yeah. Like, oh, no, people nowadays, they share office space. Because there were different like, okay. places of co-working here. Like, I didn't different even know brand that names. was called co-working. I was yeah. like... No, I've heard... Oh, I'm sorry. I've heard about it. There's even a place here that I think that uh, architecturally, it's super cool. Yeah. It's for like co-working for art. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know why I'm... Ay, ¿cómo es que se llama? I don't know. That it has like a lot of machines. Oh, you showed it to me. Yeah. yeah I've never been there, but yeah. No, I've never nice. been there, but... It looks super cool. Yeah, but that to me is like an artist workshop. Yeah. <laughs> that to me is like so, like, that's not, that's not like, I don't know. There's nothing new about that. That's just a workshop and a bunch of artists sharing a space. That's I don't a studio. Know why I forgot the name. Um, it's okay. We'll, we'll remember. But yeah, anyways, that's um, it's a super interesting show, and um, I guess ambition and just I don't know. That's what broke it. Trying to always be bigger than. But we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. But I, I you can kind of speculate yeah. and tell that that's that's where everything is heading. Just pure ambition and just wanting things to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Cuadrilla se llama. Ok. Pero sí, es que así, lo, así fue el marketing. Decía el primer coworking para creadores bogotanos. Oh. Mm. Bueno. So, let's see. Oh, I guess that's what. Um, what? ¿Cómo se llamaba el sitio donde estaban? Que era allí en Antigua. Las ca la casa que tenía como espacios... Uy, no sé. Salomé. Ay, fuch. Que, que Felipe y Blanc estaban yendo allá. ¿En Antigua? Mm, era una casa de Antigua, estoy 100% seguro. Uy, no, Esas ni idea. Esas casas son súper reconocibles. No, yo sé, yo sé, pues yo sé. Pero no... No me suena. Sí, sí, sí. Sí sabes que... De, 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 Río, Río Laboratorio. Ah, ¿es era en Antigua? Es que estoy, yo nunca fui estoy, a Río. Estoy, yo tampoco, pero estoy 100% seguro que era allá. A ver. Pero es que creo que ya acabó. Mm. Miremos en el mapa. De pronto estoy equivocado, pero si tuviera que apostar 100 mil pesos, los apuesto. No, pero creo que no es... Y los perdí. <risa> Porque mira, se ve así. O sea, busquen Google Maps. Parece. Pero luego muestran... No. Ese, ese pero no dice era. Río Laboratorio. De pronto lo cambiaron. <risa> de pronto estás viendo un sitio donde le hacen unos exámenes de sangre. <risa> sí. A ver. Eh... Ah, sí. De pronto era Grupo Río Laboratorio Clínico. Pensemos que de pronto era ese. Sí, ese creo que no es. Mm. Laboratorio Clínica del Río tampoco. Ese tampoco me suena. Ese tengo dudas, pero ese creo que no es tampoco. Sí, no. No, no lo encuentro. Sí, yo, yo voy a. Si alguien nos confirma, pero de pronto acá en los bogotanos, si sí hay bogotanos. Eh, pero me animaría a decir que si sí era por ahí. A ver. Eh... 
So I see that Irwin Peralta Art said, great question, Emily. So I'm going to look for Emily's question. Please. Emily said, yes. do you still varnish on Yupo? Well, I, I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't know if we varnished the 20 some odd paintings that we did for our painted lives. I don't remember. I don't remember. But maybe you use the yeah, wax. Yeah, but the thing is, no, the thing because no? the wax has solvents. You have to be super mm. careful with the wax also. Oh yeah, because it kind of. Oh, it'll pick it up. Um, you know, because I was watching the uh, the the painting that I did of you and the one of the bag, and we have to ship those, mm -hmm. um, because those those uh, sold, and I was thinking, did I varnish the, these? I mean, you were reading my mind. Who was the person? Betty. Emily. Emily. Sorry, Emily. Yeah. Um. But Emily, I was literally thinking that this morning and I'm a little scared to, to put liquid on top because if there's stuff that just hasn't really quite dried or is just kind of floating on the surface, maybe liquid picks it up. I mean, liquid does transform, but maybe in the places that I haven't used liquid and it's just paint and it's kind of sitting up, you know, on top, liquid will act as as a solvent because it obviously has solvent in it and it'll lift the paint. So I'm a little like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe I don't varnish them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm not going to do it. Maybe I'm not. I'm, I'm a little scared if I do something stupid and I lift paint because there's nothing worse than lifting paint. I mean, you're already done with your painting. It looks nice. You're happy. And then And boom. it's done. And you're going to varnish. And you lift stuff that yeah. you've already painted. It's like, oh, my God. And it's usually because you're not patient. And I'm mm -hmm. saying you, um, Emily. I'm saying me. <laughs> but um, I've done that many times. And it's very frustrating. Andrea Contreras dice, ¿Siempre pintas a la prima? Hola, chicos. Hola, Andrea. Para el ejercicio que estamos... O sea, para este ejercicio, Pero digamos, es la hija, no la prima. Ush. Sí, era un bueno, chiste pésimo. Vamos a <risa> no pararle bolas al comentario. Porque no Yo creo chiste, que a la prima no la has pintado. No, aquí... No vamos a seguir. No vamos a seguir. <risa> eh, eh, ya para... voy por acá. Sí, ya, 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 no, ya se dañó todo. Do, a dos la años. Prima, no, a -L -L -A -prima. Ay, pues porque. Mi qué? chiste era medio. Pero es que me dieron para hacer el chiste malo. Que si pintas a la prima. Bueno, yo muy respetuosamente voy a, eh, a responderle a Andrea. Andrea, para, para, este, para estos ejercicios, sí. Sí, hacemos como pintura directa porque, pues, digamos que tiene un poquito más sentido eh, tratar de hacer esto así en lugar de hacer pintura como indirecta y demorarnos como más sesiones con la, con la pintura, que eso es fantástico también para personas que lo hacen. Pero esto es más como para tratar de cada, cada sesión, cada, cada video, tener como una resolución de una imagen. Entonces, se, lo hacemos así, es más como por, por eso. Que yo, que si yo he pintado pintura indirecta, pues claro, claro muchísimis, muchísimis, muchísimas muchísimas de las pinturas que he hecho eh, o sea cientos de pinturas que he hecho son pinturas digamos que construidas tradicionalmente volví bueno pero nos diste ahí gracias por darnos a Andrea y a mí un espacio eh, para responder con seriedad y eh, les dice a la prima a la tía a la hermana jajaja ja, ja. Bueno, Leslie se rió de mi pésimo chiste. Bueno, Leslie ahí colaboró. La sí. única, pero colaboró. <laughs> uh, Liad said hello. Derp hey, Workshop said hi. Um, and Tani was saying, I'm sketching a character I made up in different angles and with different expressions. Oh, oh nice. cool. Cool, so, cool, cool. So, uh, tell us about yourself, uh, Tani. Are you, are you into, like, character development or do you want to animate or do you want to do illustration mm, Marcelo Forti eh, estaba diciendo saludos desde Brasil saludos, saludos, saludos. Marcelo bon dia, bon dia. <laughs> eh, a ver Tintin Rosales said hola Tintin 
היי, טינטין. How many hours of uh, sleep did you get this week, uh, Tintin? <laughs> you know that I'm always worried. Cecilia dice, me gustaría que hagan una semana de wash otra vez. Una semana, nos, nos habían dicho que acuarela, que podría ser mi némesis, pero de pronto tratamos, y de pronto tratamos de hacer otra de, de wash. Mm. Iremos a ver... Margo había dicho me gusta mucho la primera mancha pero no sé, creo que lo leí en un momento donde ya no... como esta de pronto se refiere <ríe> sí. a esa uh... I was just touching this but look This is like a perfect um, example of what I was talking about. This is very much like a thin stain of, um, you know, a lot of liquid, very little paint. But look, this is tacky. You know, there's tack to it. But it's very much, you know, uh, a surface that can actually uh, receive paint on top instead of everything just moving, moving around. Now, I can't do that. I can't do the same and I can't expect the same with, you know, the, the paint that I'm building up, especially in this particular painting in my lights. But, um, but it's interesting. I did, did I buy, yeah, I did buy like a round brush yesterday. Like a soft, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> no, I bent the whole brush. Yeah? Yeah. No, But is it okay? Biting the plastic off. Um, maybe. Maybe. I mean, these are cheaper, uh, softer brushes. But I'm kind of curious. So this is a size. Let me see. It has all that gunk. All that. Um, yeah, because we're not seeing it. Oh, yeah. It has all that um, gum that they put on top. Mm -hmm. That you're supposed to, to just put it on warm water to yeah. just take it off. I never and do, do that. that gently. What I do is like, crack, crack. I always, I always do that. Beat too. the yeah. hell out of a nice brush that I just bought. <laughs> but yeah, but if you're wondering, you're supposed to just dip it in very in like warm water and that'll dissolve that. And that's the way you should do it. So if you buy a nice brush, do that. Don't be me. I um, always use my nails. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, size. What is this like 12, I guess? And around kind of sable 12 um yeah these are cheaper ones th th these are very cheap uh these this brush would be nope no it doesn't have the price uh, the, the whole price but let me let me look at another one okay so it would be about four fifty or five bucks at most not not even five bucks this one so it's a you know soft uh brush but i'm i'm wondering if i could and we, sh we should give this a shot because i haven't painted with rounds in a while um tintin said been sleeping well thank you oh good good watching most days but i just don't comment since i'm already in sleep mode Sad oh, no. The <laughs> fact that you're here, it's like enormous. So thank you so much. And Tintin said, sadly, I have not been able to paint lately. I oh, need a push. Oh, Tintin. We have to meet again and uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get to working. Dice. Mm, oh, so you were asking Tani? Yeah. To tell us about themselves? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tani said, honestly, I'm conflicted at the moment. Oh, I love these moments. I mean, I don't <laughs> love your conflict. <laughs> I don't enjoy your suffering, but I just, I like this. This is life. I recently got into painting this past year, but yeah. I enjoy drawing characters and coming up with illustration ideas and the process of animation. I'm in college, college right now, but, I, but still conflicted on which direction I want to take with art 
or what I'm really passionate, like an illustration, animation, etc. Oh, Tani, you got to tell us what you're studying. I mean, even if it's painful, even if it's like the farthest thing from art, you got to tell us. Yeah, I want to know. And I want to know if maybe it was like my, in my art degree. Si se dice así, art degree. Um, la carrera, en la... Yeah, yep. Uh, where you, while you were studying, you could choose between like the plastic part of it, the graphic part fine of arts, it. Fine arts, fine arts. Plastic, I know that that's okay, for us. That's a direct translation for okay, us. But other people won't understand that. Of it. The graphic part of it or like the animation, more video related part of it. But don't you get a feeling from what they're saying that maybe they're studying something that has nothing to do with art? Yeah, well, because they said they recently got into painting this past year. So maybe because I was thinking that maybe they are starting something related to arts, but they they've never tried painting. Yeah. Until they got the, like, into the painting class or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. could also read it like that. Yeah. But let's see. Let's eat. Two. Already let's hungry. Two. <laughs> Hi, row road. So the row oh. rows are completed. Rosalind said hello. Yeah. Nicolas and Danny in chat. Um, Gabriel Argaj Arte said, watercolor week, please. Mind you, people ask for watercolor, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm super up for the challenge. But, I mean, this would be like, hey, skateboarding week. Yeah. And if you Don't just want to see me fall on my ass, great. <laughs> but it doesn't mean, like, I can pick up a watercolor and be like, oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. No, I don't got it. Um, Grey Jiménez dice, buenas tardes, saludos desde Barcelona. Saludos, Grey. Hola, Grey. Manuel Díaz dice, Nicolás, déjate ver por Sevilla, hombre. A mí ya me tienes ganado como alumno. Un saludo no. y mis felicitaciones por este trabajo tan sí. lindo. Y la verdad, y si me están oyendo, o sea, Galería Roja ha sido súper, súper amable eh, en contactarme para ver si podíamos hacer otro taller. Pero es que con, con pandemia estaba súper difícil. España era uno de los países que le ponía a Colombia como también como más trabas ya para... afortunadamente no, no pero ya sí, estamos ya. pues sí. tanto que pues vamos a ir literalmente el a domingo España. Sí. pero pero sí tengo que volver a, a cuadrar allá con, con ellos porque fueron súper súper amables nos fue bien tuvimos un taller totalmente lleno Sevilla es preciosa o sea, es una ciudad increíble entonces eh, yo creo que para este año no, voy a ser muy, muy honesto, yo creo que ya para este año no, pero podemos tratar de cuadrar con ellos eh, para ver si el próximo año volvemos, que es muy bonito, muy bonito. Manuel Díaz dice, yo os acojo en casa, y unos emojis riéndose. Ah, muy amable, no, allá me pagan un Airbnb, <risa> sí. allá me dan un apartamento, no que no quiera quedarme en casa con usted y, y no le esté agradeciendo el ofrecimiento, sino que pues no lo voy a poner a, a, a ser eh, anfitrión innecesariamente. Pero un día salimos a tomarnos eh, una cerveza y perfecto. Uy, una cerveza, Nicolás. Mm, ahí en el... En es, no, es que no, no sé... Eh, no, es que nombre? yo no me ubico en Sevilla, es que la verdad no estuve eh, suficiente tiempo. Pero es todo un corredor que hay que es súper bonito, donde hay restaurantes y bares y es súper como turístico, donde está como ese, ese arco también, en esa plaza, es como que es súper grande, súper turístico, entonces es como la plaza. Yo creo que si digo la plaza, se entiende. No, esto no. Pero me puede, me puede invitar a una cerveza ya. No, ni, ni siquiera me tiene que invitar, nos tomamos una cerveza y ya, yo pago la mía. Yo iba a decir, esto se me hace conocido. No, ese pero es Sevilla es Valle. Sevilla ese, es, Valle. Ese, es, ese, es, ese es el pueblo de tu familia. Ese es el ese pueblo no de es... mi papá, sí, sí, sí. Sí, ese, ese no es. Sí, pero yo lo veía y yo dije... Yo tengo que aceptarte lindo. que la primera vez que me dijiste mi abuela vive en Sevilla, mi, yo ¿Te no era a España? Muy, sí, sí. Yo no era muy... Eh, conocedor de... Conocedor de, de el... Sevilla Valle. Tenemos que ir. Ese sí. es un pendiente que tenemos en es, nuestra es lista. Es un pendiente, sí. 
Mira, esta que estaba viendo es un lugar muy bonito en Sevilla Valle. Estoy seguro que Se todo es muy Club lindo. Se llama Club Casa Los Alpes. Muy lindo debe ser. Muy buena bandeja paisa. Mm, check, please. No, porque ahí vende, es un no, restaurante. No, yo sé, yo sé. Muy rica la bandeja paisa. Eh... <risa> Como una identidad súper rara, ¿no? La de Sevilla. ¿En Sevilla? ¿Por qué? Porque como que no son bayunos, pero son paisas, pero son de Armenia. Es que es como Armenia, eje cafetero, pero valle, es, pero por sí. Por eso, eso es como, esa mezcolanza me da un poco de nervios. Porque no la conoces, tienes que ir para enamorarte de Sevilla. Mm, ese día. Eh, Manuel Díaz dice, hay muchas plazas, en cualquiera hay cerveza, jejeje. Je, je. Ah, bueno, sí. Ahí, ahí delato entonces mi ignorancia de dónde estaba. Eh, so, um, Gray Jiménez dice, hey, ya que vienen a Menorca, pasen a Barcelona. Eh, teníamos que escoger como, como una ciudad para pasear. Sí, incluso yo tengo familia en Barcelona. Entonces sí, lo para no pensado. gastarnos, el, pero era para no gastar... Tiempo o dinero, porque también... Tiempo sea, y dinero, sí. Sí, porque es que un, un tren, no es que uno diga, ay, sí, dos tickets a tren de Madrid a, a Barcelona. Eh, y es económico, no. no. Todo eso cuesta, todo cuesta. Pues, todo. y un Airbnb o un hotel o eh, un lo que sea. Exacto. Entonces, todo eso suma. No, entonces, eh, como, es, como es la primera vez que Dani va a España, digamos, lo continental... Uh -huh. Eh, entonces escogimos Madrid. Sí, que voy por fuera del aeropuerto, porque yo conozco el aeropuerto de Madrid, sí, pero no conozco corrimos. Madrid. Lo no, corrimos. Corrimos el de Barcelona. Si no, no es, y el fue. de Madrid también. Corrimos los dos, creo, sí, sí. Pero el de Madrid fue el más difícil de correr ah, porque es no, gigante. Sí, porque hicimos inmigración. Sí, y es corrimos, gigante. Corrimos barajas. Y yo me acuerdo que miramos, abordábamos como en un minuto. Y miré y decía que 30 minutos... Y la personita caminando para la puerta a la que necesitábamos. Y yo dije, sí, no. Sí, fue un pique. Y éramos tú y yo, sí, corriendo, pero Parecíamos no Parecíamos en concurso de, de... De esos de correr por todo el mundo. ¿Cuáles son esos, mi coco? Ay, pues como... Eh, eh, Amazing Race. Ah, ya, ya, ya. Como sí. concurso de esos que uno sí. tiene que correr. Pues con menos por... gracia tú y yo. Eh, aparatosos. Menos eh, gracia, más grasa. Yo iba sudando <ríe> sí. y, además, y ya... con los pulmones ya sabiéndome a sangre. Sí, porque además a mí me pateó el jet lag. Entonces yo estaba como medio zombie y corriendo. No, yo quisiera echarle la culpa al jet lag. Lo mío era falta de físico 100%. Sí. No, y, eh, no, sí, todo. Pero sí. Pero, eh, pues afortunadamente voy a poderlo conocer. Estoy sí, super... entonces eh, escogimos, escogimos Madrid. Uh -huh. Entonces vamos a ir a Madrid y de pronto si podemos vamos un día a Toledo. Uh -huh. Que nos queda cerca, digamos cerca. Pues más cerca que de acá. Entonces más cerca todo, que acá, sí. todo ayuda. No, es como para pensarlo y decir, sí, nos queda cerca. Cerca, sí. Cerca. Eh... Jose Fail said, I just made my own matcha tea at home, yay, using a tea bag from the store, but still. And What? how is it? How was it? Jose, when you say you made your matcha, I thought you were growing it. <laughs> yeah. And that's called, I just made some tea. <laughs> and it's curious because I've never done um, a matcha from a tea bag. Oh, right. Because you, you the matcha yours. is in the powder. Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious to know how. How that one is. How bag, um, bag ma matcha. Bag matcha Bacha. is. Bag cha. Bachata. Bag chata en Fukuoka. <laughs> no, Nicolás, do you? Uh, Liet said, has anyone ever been to the Portrait Society Conference? No, I haven't. I, I personally haven't. I've known that conference for years and years. Um, I know people enjoy it. They enjoy the demos. They enjoy the portfolio. Sometimes they do portfolio reviews. Or sometimes they, you know, they, they meet people that um, that can, you know, can be good. It, it can be like a good business sort of meet. Uh, but, and, and I've heard that from, from friends of mine. But um, I haven't had the, that, quite that experience. So, So, um, A-H-E-S okay. said, hi, Nicolás. 
If you use so much liquid to the to thin the paint, won't those places turn yellow in the time due to the big amount of medium? Oh, I am sure eventually the painting is going to yellow. So I'll say that. I am a thousand percent positive that the painting is going to yellow. Um, it would be naive and ignorant on my part to not be aware of, of the fact that liquid will yellow. Do I care about it? No. And I'm not just being um, above it or I'm not just being kind of like, oh, I, I don't care. Like, like this is something that, that I'm not, um, that doesn't play a, a part in my painting. I actually even think it does play a part. The fact that I know that it yellows plays a role in my painting. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I often speak about this and I think we, you know, this desire to have things um, be eternal and sort of unscathed by time. It's a very Western way of thinking. It's a very, very Western way of thinking. And because we are, you know, because oil painting is very much so like a Eurocentric tradition, we believe that that's, that is the way painting is supposed to be. Like, that is painting. Anything else that doesn't sort of abide by those principles then is, is kind of deviating from its own history, so it's wrong. But the truth is, you know, um, there's, there are other cultures that actually embrace the fact that if you have something that was made of silver, it blackens. And if it blackens, you don't polish it. You just leave it black because black means that time has passed and that you know silver when it oxidizes it blackens and darkens and it doesn't mean dirty because that's why i think us westerners also view that as just dirt you know time equals dirt yellow yellowing equals dirty painting so much so that when restorers um you know re-varnish a painting they clean the painting mm. so we think it's dirty we, and yes, sure, there were paintings in churches that had varnishes. And because of all that incense and smoke from candles, it got stuck in that varnish. And then it looks super, super brown, which I love, by the way. I adore those paintings mm. because, again, that's time. Yeah, it is time. There is something gorgeous about time. I've put this example like many, many times. But um, the victory in the... Uh, in in the uh, Louvre muse uh, in the Louvre mu museum, God, I can I can't speak, but the victory, the statue, the victory of uh, Samotracia, Samotris, but the uh, the statue of Nike of the uh, victory that's up the steps, that it ha doesn't have arms, doesn't have a head, I think it is that powerful because it does it doesn't have arms or head hmm. or, or doesn't have a head. If you look at any other like Nike statues, victory statues, small, big. They're very much like, you know, angel statues, but there's something, there's something about that statue that is fascinating. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's broken. A lot of it. The uh, Belvedere torso, the one that's at the um, Vatican Museum, exactly the same thing. It doesn't have limbs. You know, the, uh, the figure is cut off by its, uh, you know, right after the knee and it doesn't have arms. It doesn't have a, le it doesn't have a head. And there's something about it that seems incredible. There's, there's something timeless even about it. And all of these, you know, things are essentially objects that originally, originally looked some way, but then because time has passed, they've, you know, now, um, you know, been transformed into something that I would argue is more powerful. Hmm. And I'm not saying that a painting, that this is like, a, oh, my God, what a beautiful half ass argument of saying that a painting is going to become more powerful just because it gets dirtier or yellower. No, no, no. I think at its core, what I'm trying to say is that at some point, it's not bad if we embrace the fact that a painting gets old. Yeah. It's OK. It's OK. And, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure they would say, no, it's not OK, because if. If Rembrandt thought that way and if he was negligent, you know, with his paint and I'm choosing those words like um, knowing where I'm going with this. But because I, I don't think that, you know, it is about negligence. But but when framed under the mm, argument, under the, the 
the fact that a painter has to be responsible. Like, uh, you you have to um, you have to be re being responsible with your painting means that your painting has to survive not only you but generations after you, and it has to be like immutable. It has to be it has to be oh my god, this looks as if it was painted yesterday. Like people five centuries from now, they have to look at a painting and say, it's as fresh as the day it was painted. Like that that argument for painting is so strange. It's so, so strange. And I get it. Like what, what I was saying about Rembrandt, if Rembrandt didn't think, you know, if Rembrandt would have thought that way, maybe a lot of his paintings wouldn't exist. Um, and I think I'm okay with that. And maybe uh, people would say, because I'm trying to be devil's advocate here, like I'm having this argument argument in my brain, but maybe other people would say, well, you say this because you've already seen Rembrandt's in good, in good shape. But I don't know. How many gorgeous things that have inhabited this planet or that have been done in this planet that we are completely unaware of were beautiful? How many things that were incredible in this planet are now gone? And... You know, what does that mean? That we're, you know, worse for not being able to experience those things? I don't know. I just, I don't know. It, I think that this is something that, in my case, it it runs deeper than just, um, than just saying, hey, do the painting that you know how to do. Because, trust me, like, I've done hundreds of paintings that can stand the test of time. I have, you know, washed my linen like stoned my linen even and then restretch my linen and then you know give it a drink of you know rabbit skin glue and then give it like a nice kind of um layer of rabbit skin glue so it tightens and i've even um um uh, primed with oil i've even oil primed my my some of my linens but but you know most of them were like you know universal primers um and i've treated those paintings as if they were you know the most precious thing in the world I have done that, but I can tell you that for me, that's, I don't know. I don't, like, where did I sign that contract? Where does it say that that's how things are supposed to be? And, and a lot of my life, I think, and, you know, uh, years, this has been probably, this was years in the making, but a lot of my life was just really about questioning those things and, and saying, and not saying like, okay, because I question those things, then what sort of painter am I? Oh, I'm going to become like a modern painter, you know, I'm going to become, or I'm going to become like an abstract expressionist painter, like in the, uh, I don't know, 50s and 60s, that they could, they could care less about, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the well-being of a painting. They don't, they didn't care. Like they, they did so much like technical, you know, they, they did so many technical things that, that made no sense, like. Chem in terms of the uh, chemistry of paint, they made absolutely no sense. And now tons of those paintings are suffering, let's say, quote unquote, suffering for it. But, um, but I love to think that I can paint like this and not care if the liquid is going to yellow and know that the, but know for a fact that the liquid is going to yellow. I hope it's, I'm not trying to convince anyone with that. I think the easiest thing would be to say, hey, just follow history. You know, we have over five centuries, over six centuries, well, almost six centuries of painting. Uh, or, or what we understand is like, you know, Western painting, oil painting. We have almost six centuries of that that are showing us the way, you know, that we, we, we're, we've been able to look at painting and examine painting and say, okay, where did we, where, where did we um, happen to have like missteps? Why did we try to do this? Uh, and what happened to those paintings? And, you know, what are those paintings that are in amazing shape, incredible shape? Like, for example, sometimes I look at Rubens, some of Rubens' paintings. Oh, my God. I mean, it's ridiculous how fresh they look. Ridiculous. So what does that mean then? Like, do we all paint like Rubens? Like, is that how we all have to paint? And I don't know. Every time I say, well, maybe, yeah. I mean, they're showing you how to properly, again, I'm choosing those words, how to properly paint. But then another side of my brain is like, what do you mean properly paint? What do you mean? What does that mean? What does that even mean? So a lot of questioning. But I can tell you this. When I say 
I'm fully conscious. I hope that people trust me that in my case, in my path, you know, in my experience, I'm very, very conscious of what I'm doing. So I know it may not be the answer, you know, that people want to hear, especially, you know, I've had, we've had people like, hey, you guys are painting on paper. Like, what the hell? You guys are selling these paintings. Don't you feel like responsible to, you know, to your buyers? And it's like, what? We, we speak almost every day yeah. about the fact that we're painting on like raw paper. Yeah. Like, I mean, almost it's every even in the day. description of every yeah, painting. Almost every so. day we speak about these things. Yeah. So I, cause I wanted to, um, so I'm sorry if I went a little bit. No, long no, no, on it's that. fine. There is a conversation around this. So I'm yeah. going to read first what Leslie said. But Leslie then, Cavazos? Yeah, but okay. then Panacotic uh, was talking Panicotti. was sorry, also sorry. talking about something uh, like this that you were mentioning about selling the painting. So wait, so okay. first Leslie. Wait, like you wait. said. Wait. Wait. Leslie Nicolás, said, wait. shut up and wait. I think I've never told you to shut up. Never in your life. Never, that ever, is, ever. That is very true. Like you, I really love that you talk and talk. Like I'm happy listening to you. So Leslie said... Before I start getting cheesy. I love old aged oil painting. They have a character and the change of color is very magical to me. And Leslie also said nothing is forever and that is the beauty of it. Plus, I wouldn't want to take away the jobs from art restoration. Ha ha ha, joking. So, uh, this is a l long uh, text. Let's hear it. Let's so, I'm going to read from Panacotic. We could answer like step by step. So I'm going to uh, read it all. Whatever you deem better. Okay, so let me read it all. Yes. And then uh, we could like um, start answering. Yes. Panacotic said, Maybe the argument would be different if you were doing a commission or selling to a client. And that client might want the painting to, quote unquote, not age. Versus doing daily paintings for yourself. So maybe we could answer here. Because uh, the paintings Nicolas do here are not for... Like the sake of the video only. Uh, as Nicolas said, we sell the paintings. Uh, so as you were saying, it's like people know what they're going to get because they know your philosophy uh, in art. Like what you stand in art and uh, how you we like hope so. that. At least we hope that they're aware of. And I think a lot of the people that, yeah. that do purchase our painting, I can't say for a fact that everyone. But I think they're not... I really do believe that people don't only don't not only buy a painting, but they support what we do. Mm -hmm. And what we do is just bigger than the making of a painting. So mm -hmm. in that sense, yes. Yeah. But I do want to so, say, uh, wh who was writing? I'm sorry. Panacotic. No, because um, I haven't finished. But oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, if you want to address that and then I continue. Yeah. But no, yeah. So, so first part, sure. You're 100% right. Like if you are going to charge... $30,000 for a portrait commission. Th these are not weird numbers, by the way. That's a very, you know, with good, well-known uh, painters. That's pretty, you know, if you're doing a full-figure commission on a portrait, that's very much so a price that a price range that can be, you know, that can be ubiquitous, in at least in the U.S. Um, uh, and you're right. You're right. You know, you have to... If you're going to do a commission, you have to be aware of what your client expects of your painting. A hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right on that. We're not doing commissions. So the nature of this differs greatly from the nature of doing a, a commission where you're going to charge, you know, a hundred times more than what we charge. So. Yeah. But uh, we do sell the paintings, which yeah. is also important. A hundred times less. Yeah, but we still sell them. I mean, I know for a hundred times less. Yeah, that's I've a heard that's that. a very important. That's you know that's not negligible. That's not like a no, but it's something that I wanted to like clarify because I think that maybe Panacotic uh, didn't knew that we sell the paintings. Oh, okay, okay. No, so I think they do. I wanted to maybe. clarify that it's okay. not like yeah, but for a thousand times less. No, just want to clarify that. A hundred, a hundred. Uh, Panacotic said. But I have seen a lot of people, often beginners, say they want quote unquote archival quality ink for mm -hmm. ink drawings. And I think that argument applies. Like how much do you really need these to be eternal? 
I guess also right now in this internet age the painting itself isn't the only part of the quote-unquote product or quote-unquote art piece. Like this stream itself is a mark of what you're doing and if the painting disintegrated right after after there would still be a meaningful impact of it. You guys were the first people I saw who did oils on paper. It really helped me get started with oils. Thanks for that reading everywhere's what? <laughs> Thanks for that. Reading everywhere else, it seemed you had to paint on linen or wood, and it had stopped me f from starting. And that's it. No, that's that's great. And thank you. Thank you for those words. Thank yeah. you so so much. Um, Happy to have you here. Yes, yes, yes. And um No, all all I all I can say is that again, hopefully this is not um I think that that part of me is is super interested in pushing, you know, just the the act of painting, the very act of painting regardless of where you paint it or not like there's people nowadays that paint digitally mm. and it's a file and files get corrupted or you put it on a disc and it doesn't matter if it's a hard drive that spins or if it's a, it's a um an sd uh you know they get they don't last forever files don't last forever and you would have to copy them and paste them or put them in a server and the fact they're in a server servers don't last forever they won't run forever Servers are shut down constantly. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's I don't like this idea that you have to race against time to try to preserve everything. It's just, there's, like, I don't think, I think a life, a, a, a life that was lived well is a great legacy. I don't think that the things that we leave behind, the things that we do and we mm -hmm. leave behind our legacy. I don't even like that word because a lot of people, when they paint, it's like, what do I, what am I going to leave behind? And I always think like, I don't even know if I think in those terms, like I want to leave behind like a, um, the sense that I was in a respectful relationship with you, yes. you know, uh, Danny. And, and I, I wish that, I hope that my kids are decent, you know, hardworking people, honest people, um, loving people, compassionate people. And that, Maybe some of that came from, you know, their upbringing. Um, I think that that's better than any painting. You know, if you if you ask me if I if I have to if I can make like the best painting I'll ever make and my kids are idiots, I don't want my kids to be idiots. Like I much rather put all that effort in thinking like I want my kids to be just good people. Mm -hmm. So if I have to be a mediocre painter, but my kids are just good human beings, I'll take that a hundred out of a hundred times. So. I don't know. For me, it's a little bit bigger than painting. Like painting is like a small part of an equation that just helps you, in my mind, helps you understand like life. That it, That's really, really it. But it doesn't give meaning to my life. It doesn't really. Um, so I think it's a lot of, in, I can only speak for myself, but um, I think what I've, what I've, noticed about my own painting is that I just wanted to begin to be a little more mm, I wanted my paintings and the things I believe in I truly believe in to meet to meet because mm -hmm. the things I believed in as a human being were here but then what I executed with my paintings was saying something different was believing in something different almost like inherently And all I was trying to do was like say, hey, what if those two meet a little bit? What happens when you make an effort in life to have those two meet? What does that look like? And that has been honestly the the nature of, you know, almost everything that that we're doing. So so, yeah, when I, you know, hopefully this doesn't sound dogmatic at all. This is just, you know, we, we can't repeat this enough, but. This is just paths of life that take you places and, you know, you make choices as you go through life. And, you know, I can only share with you guys what that path has meant to me and what those experiences have meant for me and, and the decisions that I've made so that I feel okay with them. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is going to have, is going to build their own 
like separate path and it's so it's super okay but i all i know is like i'm not trying to convince anyone of anything it's just that i'm trying to be true to to the things that i believe in so and the things that i believe in are you know they're harmless they're not you know it, this is not something terrible it's not like like oh my god you sold a painting and in 200 years it's gonna yellow oh yes i'm so sorry yeah I'm so sorry about that. You bought a car that the paint in that car, if the sun hits it too much, it yellows and it cracks and it, you know, and you probably spend, you know, 200 times more on that car than on my painting. So come on. Like, the, it's so weird that we hold the painting or we hold kind of, um, you know, things in art, things that belong to like the... Uh, like a, the creative practice of, of art, we hold them to like a different standard. And so much so that it's like a, it's almost as if the, the nature of, of, you know, things is outside the realm of how a painting should be. The nature of things, of life, of how things, you know, how time goes by, how things get old. It's like, it's so ridiculous for me. It's like, oh yeah, the universe, yeah, it works in this way but we don't want our paintings to work that way no come on we want paintings to be different what anyways yeah so sorry. Leslie, sorry. no why sorry yeah i don't know i no. sometimes I, I i think it gets like a little sentimental no i um, like it my arguments but mm, leslie Cavazo said 100 agree uh roslyn said it's interesting how people resist aging think plastic surgery and how much more everyone wants uh brady fellow fellows i'm sorry said for me honestly honesty is the most important quality in any piece of art that's one of the reasons i love your work uh alex Wilby said we need a week what will bow no i was gonna say uh. I, ju I, ju i was just gonna do a shout out Uh, said, we need a week of the most aggressive mediums on the most fragile surfaces. <laughs> I, want the, I want them to be falling apart <laughs> before the end of the video. That would be fun. Yes. I'm going to use sulfuric acid today as uh, <laughs> my solvent on this eggshell. So let's see how long uh, this painting uh, you know, takes to disintegrate. And Panacotic said, Alex will be. I've seen some very good artists draw on dry erase boards or stuff like that. And destroyed right after, like the sand sand patterns or mandalas that you trace and immediately destroy. Also, thanks for your response, Nicolas and Danny. You guys are some of my favorite artists on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, that's thanks. so sweet. Thank you. Um, and Alex Wilby said, I've done a lot of graffiti in my time. I've spent 12 hours painting a wall, knowing that it will be painted over within a week. But that never mattered. Yeah, graffiti is like, you know that I've always, maybe we can have this conversation with with, um, with like somebody who does graffiti here or anywhere actually in the world because I've always been fascinated by, you know how, how for example, here in, in Colombia, and, that, and I guess this is very much so true with other cities around the world, other countries, graffitis also speak about territory. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yes. that you can't simply go to any wall in Bogota, for example, and paint over anything. Yeah, like without like, a context of yeah. where it is. And sometimes you, you can't. Mm -hmm. Like if that's not your neighborhood, if you, if you don't belong to the people that are painting in those walls, like that is an act of aggression. Oh, that right. would be considered like a super harsh act of aggression. Yeah, because like, I was thinking more of like the content of the graffiti right. that also has, has to talk a little bit about where it is. Right, right, right. Because that could also be an aggression to... Right, also, yes, yes, totally agree. To the place it is. And sometimes I've heard uh, graffiti artists or, or like urban artists say, well, if you're going to paint on top of something, it has to be better. And it's like, how, like, who curates like yeah. this idea of better? Like, what is better? What does that mean? Like society as a whole or the neighborhood? Do you walk by and if like, I don't know, if 20 people are standing in front of it and say... That's actually better than we all agree that it's better Then it's like, okay, that it was painted over. Um, and 
I've also noticed that graf- some graffiti artists, like many artists, not this is not just about like urban artists. Um, uh, they have a, a fragile ego, and again, like all of us, and they feel completely attacked when somebody paints over their their graffitis. And it's like, dude, you painted on a wall outside, like. You can't claim a wall. You can't. This is like when space is public and fine. Sometimes the best of graffitis, I think, use public space to to denounce something or to make people look at something. And that's super cool. Um, But you can't expect that because that message is powerful to then the space lose its uh, nature of it being public. Like public space is public space, period. Like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear why public space transforms into a private argument or into just this lone voice. Even if it's even if what they're saying is the most beautiful, true thing in the world. It's like, why did you think you had the right to 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 think for everyone else to say, oh, this is a good message. I'm going to subject everyone to this message that I've always loved those arguments like. I, I think I totally get it, but I'm always like fascinated by like, how does this work? Like, is, is there a dynamic underneath all of this? Can, can I just go and paint a wall? Like if I look at a wall that's been graffitied and I say, you know what? I think it's cool, but I actually like it all white. And if you paint over it with white, is that an aggression? Is that like, oh my God, you are, um, ¿cómo se dice? Um, ¿Y respetando? No, no, no. Como... Um, Censurando, censure, censuring, uh, no. censoring, censoring. Censorship, yeah. yeah. Censor. Is that censorship? What if I just like things white? And it's like I've I've read like um, people doing like art pieces where they said that art is uh, like white is like docile and white is nothing. And it's like sometimes I'm like, I actually like white walls. I actually don't like when where we sleep, we don't have art. All over the place. I mean, we yeah. have stuff, but we don't have art. I couldn't. I tell you right now, I don't know if I could sleep with art, because if I go to bed, I don't want to look at a painting and have my mind going a million miles an hour. I want to rest. Mm-hmm. So, resting places can't be empty or can't be like gray or white or just simple. So there's so many things that I would love to talk about with um, with graffiti artists and. But, and hopefully graffiti artists that are like super aware of of everything they're doing. And it's not just like it's ego. It's just tagging. It's just saying I was here. You know, I want to claim territory. You know, I've been taking everything away from me. Like I don't have a job. I don't have social security. I don't have a future. I couldn't pay for my education. But fuck it. I'm going to I'm going to claim this wall. I'm going to tell you that I've been here, that I've been here, that I've been here. Like these are all my spaces. And I want you as a, you know, person that walks uh, as a pedestrian to to say, uh, oh, you know, these are people that are claiming these spaces. So I don't know, because in the end, it's also like super aggressive then. Um, But anyway, I'm fascinated by it. Like as an as an artist, I'm just fascinating by 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 all of that. So Alex will be said, oh, for sure, regarding painting over the other graffiti. It's usually dependent on whether it's public or in a legal space. You can't just rock up and paint over someone. But if it's a legal free space, then fill your boots. Uh, it's a respecting thing in graffiti too. Sometimes things can be in a dangerous place, on a crazy ledge or something. And it would be just mean to go over that. But what does that mean? It would be just mean. Like... What is like th- that's why I say I totally get it. Like, of course I get it. But what does that mean? Like, oh, no, I'm not going to be mean. Somebody like somebody went up that, uh, for example, in here, they go up the um, road signs. You know, those road signs that are like, you know, um, maybe 10 meters, 15 meters up in the air. And they just climb up those things and they graffiti in those empty sort of spaces where, where nobody has claimed those signs. Um, and it's like, oh my God, you know, these dudes could have died, like, honestly, like obviously could have died going up or maybe falling while they were painting. But 
I don't know. It's like, so I can't paint over that? I can't? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Like, you, you've earned the right then to, to say, you cannot touch this again. Like, that to me is like this idea of preciousness that goes weirdly against the very nature of painting outside. Brady Fellow said, I run into that philosophical territory issue when I paint in a, painted a mural. I don't know if I ever reach a good solution. The mural got tagged in a very minor way, but I still got upset and I couldn't figure out if I had any moral right to be mad. Right, exactly. And that's cool that you had that moment. It's like, am I mad? Did they, did they ruin what I did? But I was painting on a wall that doesn't belong to anyone. And why? Because I, it took me a week and because, you know, I spent you know, hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars worth in paint and cranes and stuff. Like, does that mean nobody can touch my art? Doesn't that make like streets and, and facades of buildings like the same as museums? Like, it, it, doesn't the argument fall apart in the sense that, oh, we, we're going to bring the painting outside of these like institutional spaces and, you know, let everyone enjoy it you know, outside, but it's like, let everyone enjoy it, but don't touch it. Don't come near it. You can't smoke right next to it. You can't, you know, paste stuff on top of it. Um, you can't, and of course you can't, if I did this really nice face, like you're crazy if you're going to put your tag like on top of it, like, doesn't that, isn't that like to completely against the very nature of just wanting to go outside and paint? Mm. Mary S. said, I think it's just a matter of etiquette. ¿Cómo se dice? Etiquette, Eti yeah. Etiquette. Um, Alex Wilby said, it's, a very, it's very hard to describe it here in just a few words. Much longer conversation, for sure. Right, right. Yeah, that's why uh, I, I was saying, like, oh, it could be such a nice um, conversation, not debate. I don't even have, like... Uh, I don't have a, a horse on this race. I don't... I, yeah. I just like to No, because the thing is that when you... Uh, are curious about something you always play like all, questions all sides. and yeah. yeah so you play like devil's advocate always so it's not like you're defending something or the other you just you're just curious to know i have to know everything sides, for e from every side yeah. yeah i think that's my curious kind of um teacher side where i can't really pick sides i just have to find every little bit of like um Like every shore you can stand on an argument. You have to examine. You have to. Because you have to be aware of it. Mm, Brady Fellow said, I have a friend who insists that murals are gentrification and I can't outright refute that. I'm still so conflicted about whether I want to do more murals. Uh, but you know that from, from the little that I know, because I can't say that I know a lot, but for example, in, in Brazil, I know that when they started doing, you know, years and years ago, we're talking decades ago, when they started doing urban art, they used it as a way of speaking about how the government would do these, um, uh, these government housing projects or these housing projects that, you know, were, were sometimes private and, and or, or, or like financed by the state, but they were pro the projects that would fall apart, that maybe the money ran out and they had to stop in the middle of that project. There were tons and tons of buildings that would be completely obsolete, absolutely obsolete. And they wanted to, to point the finger and to make them visible, you know, because if you just see this, this ruin of a building, you don't really kind of have quite the dimension. But if you have like this enormous graffiti or if it's just full of gra graffiti that, so that it turns so loud, you can't over... You can't overlook it. You can't not see it and not be aware. So it was a very nice way of pointing at, hey, you know, you were trying to have these projects that fell apart because of corruption or, you know, whatever reason. And we're going to make you look at them. We're going to make you see, you know, what you don't want to see. And I kind of like that. I kind of get it. But I know that that degenerated. No, well, not degenerated, but that transformed into you know, many things, many, many different things that is, you know, that is what urban art is nowadays. Mm. Um, Gaby dice, buenos días. 
Hola Gaby, buenos días. Buenos días, eh, eh, señora Gabriela. Mirta Siomeli Sandín dice, hola chicos, entrando, hola, entrando un poco atrasada y nunca tarde. Agradable como siempre escucharlos interactuar y pintar. Saludos desde Estocolmo. Saludos ah, ¿verdad? para Mirta, Mirta, Mirta también. Mm. Mirta cubana, ¿no es cierto era? Sí. Es, perdón, no. Es. Sí, seguirá siendo Toda cubana la vida. siempre, claro. Uh, when you were talking about your painting aging, yes. Irving Torres Art said, hi, hey, well, Irvin. You're always very transparent about what you do. Plus, there's always the option of not buying if you're too worried about that. Exactly. The people who buy your art are aware and want to support you. So, yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. This is not like a... This is like one of those things, oh, that's a terrible show. Well, you don't want to... You don't have to watch it. Yeah. Oh, my God, that YouTube channel. Nobody is forcing you to click anything. Yeah. Nobody. So, yeah, you're totally right. Eh, Mirta Siomelis dice, sí, gracias, cubana hasta la sepultura. Claro. Claro. Además, me acuerdo, si no estoy mal, sí. eh, no estábamos hablando del frío, claro de lo que difícil si haga... que ha sido, claro, que, sí. que Mirta dice que igual... Que si la, la genética se podría acostumbrar al frío y, y nosotros que no creemos tanto. que no, sí. Eh, o sea, un frío bogotano de pronto, pero un frío de, de Estocolmo, Estocolmo, sí. No. Eh, El colmo. El colmo. Camila Ogorman dice Camila. hi. Hola. Hola. Hola, Camila. ¿Cómo está Camila? Eh, Mirta. Ya habíamos hablado de los, de los libros de apuntes de Camila. Qué locura, ¿no? Sí. Qué Uy. locura, Camila. Sí. No. sí, sí, sí. Absurdo. Sí. Increíbles. Si Mind no, blowing. Sí, si no han visto ese post de Camila Ogerman. Eh, donde está en mostrando Instagram. en Instagram eh, el trabajo que ha hecho con, con sus libretas de apuntes, con sus bitácoras, es increíble, hmm. increíble. Um, Respect. Mirta dice, a veces viajo más al norte y no sabes lo frío que es. No, pues la verdad no, no me imagino. <risa> Nada, o sea, eh, Panacotic said, this discussion of timelessness is making me think, you know, how Inktober is about do a drawing, post it. Imagine if there was a challenge that said, do the best painting you can, then show it to no one and destroy it. I guess it would really, quote unquote, catch on social media. <laughs> yeah, but social media is... Is all about evidencing. Well, it's about socializing. Yeah, so. and it's evidence. I remember one time, like, when I would travel, I would take... You know me. I don't like to take pictures of myself. No. So I would take pictures of stuff. Like, oh, I like saw this places. and this. Yeah. yeah. And I remember some people were like, hey, if you're not in the picture, you weren't there. Oh, I've heard that too. And it's like, too. what? Yeah, like, and were you really there? Yeah, come on. Do, are we really supposed to believe that you were there? These, yeah. are, these could be pictures that anyone took. And that's why people, that's why it's so important. Like the, the idea of a selfie is the idea that I am here. Like I'm inhabiting this place. I'm showing you that I'm here. I'm showing you that I'm doing this. I'm showing you that this is my food. Like this is my lunch. Um, and it just, it wouldn't like the very nature of trying to evidence like whatever you're doing would be broken if you say, if you just did a post and it's like, Guys, I just painted the best thing I ever painted trust in my me. entire life. Yeah. It was incredible. Like, trust me. I wish you could be there. Yeah. Send. <laughs> Post. <gasps> it's like, what? What are you talking about? That's mm -hmm. why I always make fun of it. But it's like, um, you know, Little Prince. You just make a box. You just make a box and you just say, you know, the... Um, you can't open it, but it has the most precious... Thing. Yeah, the little goat. Is it a goat or a lamb? I, I, I forget. I think it's a lamb. Yeah, the baby lamb that you want is in that box. Don't make me draw it because if I draw it, you're always going to find, you know, things that are wrong with it. But the one that you want is in that box. So I'm going to draw you that box. That's like... I know it's so cliche to sometimes quote like Little Prince, but it's... Beautiful. Mm. It's an it's a perfect idea. I love yeah. the Little Prince. Book. It's a perfect idea. It's like 
having could you imagine it, it, this is a beautiful show by the way but and i don't know if it's done before i'm i'm pretty sure but could you imagine like having a painting exhibition and every single painting was in a crate was in a shipping crate mm -hmm. and you know they're called like uh, uh uh well no if you title them you would have to then it would become a, like a play between the idea the title, the words, and the Which idea. Which would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like describing. Names of paintings. Who did, who did that? Baldessari? Yeah, like, Baldessari did the I names of paintings, the titles of paintings? I think he did. Anyways, um, but, you know, you could argue that the most beautiful painting that you've ever painted is in that crate. And you don't need to show it to anyone. It's just, it's, it just is in that crate. It lives. The idea lives in that crate. So... Who did those paintings? Who did those titles? Mm. Panacotic said, ha ha ha, on title one, on title two, on title three. <laughs> They're all in boxes and you can see them. I yeah. love that idea. And you know that you could sell that a hundred percent. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's like Manzoni's crap on a tin can. And there would be people, like if you assured people that there was a painting in there, some people would buy them, buy this absurdly overpriced, um, you know, they would pay this absurdly overpriced sum of money for that. And other people would be like, I'm going to play this game and I'll never open it. I'll never open it. That's the thing. I don't want to open it. I want to believe that, sure, you know, they're the greatest painting ever is inside this crate. Let's see. Um, Gaby dice muy artsy fartsy de ustedes. Emery, Ga oh. No, que estoy, estoy acordándome. Yo hice, yo hice una expo eh, porque yo estaba haciendo pinturas que eran como filtradas con, con cera. Entonces me encantaba esa idea de filtrar una pintura y que tuviera una superficie de cera para que la volviera como más, no sé. Eh, parecía como una neblina que afectaba la cera. Me, me encantaba esa idea de que hubiera una capa que físicamente tuviera una incidencia sobre la manera como uno mm, mm, percibía una imagen. Y yo hice toda una exposición donde yo dije, bueno, ya no quiero que sea cera, pero las voy a meter en estas cajas y me hace un jurgo de plata haciendo esas estúpidas cajas. Eh, donde casi que empotraba la pintura y le ponía un acrílico súper opaco encima a la pintura. Y les ponía, les ponía tornillitos y la sellaba, sellaba la, la, la cajita. Uh -huh. Parecido, ¿sabes a qué? A los, a los zapatos esos empotrados de Doris. Más, sí. más o menos, que son okay. bellísimos. Son una cosa... Lástima que Doris sea, sea una hueva. No, dígase es, eso así. Pues Doris, es, perdóname, yo, yo no soy fan de esa Doris... Yo no soy fan de esa Doris, pero yo soy fan de... Pero soy consciente que Doris es una artista increíble. Sí, sí, sí. Pero la no, Doris... No digo la palabra que usaste. No, pues, pero es que... Pero es que... Mi amor, se puso al servicio como del gobierno. Y es... entonces, bueno, hizo unas payasadas, digámoslo así. Uh -huh. Unas payasadas. Unas cosas que no, no... Perdón. Pero a mí me encanta la Doris. La Doris de los muebles, de los zapatos. Eh, se me hace genial. Obviamente es genial ella. Obviamente, eso es, yo creo que uno no puede decir que no. Pero, pero entonces hice esas cajas y, y, y de esas vendimos creo que todas las pinturas. Y había gente que me dice, no, apenas yo, apenas me la entregue a la galería, voy a abrir la caja y ya. O sea, voy a abrir, quitarle la tapa porque quiero ver la pintura. O sea, era como que bobada, yo quiero ver la pintura. Y sí, o sea, ahí ya uno dice, no, pues ya, ¿qué puedo hacer? No, no sé. O Esa no era la idea, pero pues bueno, gracias. Uh, Emery Borch said yeah. Schrodinger's painting haha. <laughs> Schrodinger's okay. Schrodinger's Yeah, yeah, yeah the, la, el, el físico? Yeah Okay Yeah, I think I'm remembering Is it about the They had the hypothesis of the Like an animal in a box I think That could so. die I think so, yeah Like that would be Dead and alive at the same... I want to check. I'm sorry. Uh, the 
Yes. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. Danny with the flex. Flexing Danny. Uh, Danny said, I think you mentioned early in your career you did illustration for a bit. Yes. What made you choose to do that career for a while? Oh, because wait, because I've seen, I mean, you were talking, so I wasn't trying to uh, interrupt you. But remember you asked Tani about what they were studying? Yes, yes, yes. So I saw that Tani wrote back. Yeah, please. They said, uh, I've always drawn and enjoyed it. In high school, I really got into art and got to use different materials and experiment and made lots of pieces to prepare for college. I major in fine arts. Oh, cool. I mostly do traditional art, but recently found out about all these different art careers. So I'm kind of lost on what to choose because I enjoy illustration and painting, but also animation. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so the question they were doing right now was, I think you mentioned early in your career, you did yes. some illustration for a bit. What made you choose to do that career for a while? Oh, but that's what I studied, though. That's literally That was literally my, my major. Mm -hmm. I... Um, so I love illustration and initially I really did want, wanted to be an illustrator. It's just that when I started painting and particularly painting from life, it just, it, it was like a bug that bit me and it just never, you know, I could never, I don't I could never let it go. Never, never. It just, it was there with me from the first moment I did it. And then, so suddenly in my life it was, um, a future as a comic book artist turned into a future as a as an illustrator which turned into a future as a painter so those things it's not an evolution like it's not like one is more sophisticated than the other one is like more than the other one is more important than the other no 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 i mean i i wish i could have been somebody like mignola like mike mignola um so there, there's no this is not like uh, climbing up a ladder, let's say. This is not like one, one job is, is so much better than the other. Um, no, no, no. It's just my, my not even progression. It's just how, I, how life kind of put these things in my way and how I kind of fell in love with them. Uh, so, no, but I did graduate as an illustration major, and um, that was the job that I did for, uh, for a little bit. Camila Ogorman dice, ay, gracias, es totalmente gracias a Painted Lives, jamás hubiera podido hacer esto sin ustedes, no. No, a ver, no, no Camila. Nos acompañamos o sea. en el proceso, eh, tanto Camila nos acompañó como nosotros a Camila, pero en compañía, o sea, sí, pero Camila la, pero sin nosotros que... igual sería un artista sí, increíble. La o que sea. pintó todo eso fue Camila. Sí, 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 nosotros ahí no, nada, nada, nada. Eh, so I like this question. Yes. Roslyn. Ooh. Roslyn always has like oh, cool the, the games. Would you rather? Would you rather? Yeah. Uh, it's not a would you rather. Oh. But <laughs> I'm out. Check, please. But Roslyn said, curious. Yes. What is the smallest painting you've painted, Nicolas? Mm. So I did, this one's kind of easy for me because I did miniatures for the. Um, for the, um, it's called Palacio San Carlos. It's like a palace. Well, it's it's not a palace in the sense like because I always when I always say palace, I always feel like Middle Eastern palace or something yeah. like that, like something just beautiful like that. Mm -hmm. But it's called Palacio San Carlos, and what it is, it's just a part um, of these. Uh, you know, very formal buildings. It's actually connected. El Palacio San Carlos is actually connected to the presidency. Yeah, I know because I've been there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. went in a tour. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So I went to both of them. Yeah, so they're actually connected. But I know this because I've painted like, um, you know, formal. Uh, I painted formal part, like portraits. Like mm -hmm. um, I like painted. Commissioned. Yeah, like presidents. And I had to paint. Uh, th there's a, a, a collection of miniatures that. Um, that is very beautiful. That they were, they're very, very beautiful. And I have to say, I painted them when I wasn't a, a good painter. <laughs> so I, I would be very curious to, to see, see them? 
them again, but I don't know if they're good. Oh, don't search for them. Hopefully, oh god, they're not. Hopefully, they're not there. I don't know if I can bear looking at them if 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 they're if you can find them. Um. Yeah, but so so there's um there's this closet. There's this you know it's not a closet. I'm sure there's a a, a nicer name for it. But there's this um thing that has all these like small portraits of of every single Colombian president and um, they had stopped doing them because I think the person that did those miniatures had died you know obviously an older painter that you know maybe painting miniatures was just more traditional back then but um, and they asked me if I could do the if I could do the ones that were missing and if I could do up until I don't know I guess f uh, f three presidents ago four prints four print I don't know um, and I did, and I think um, Camilo, Camilo Calderon, yeah, I don't did see Camilo Calderon did the last um, last president. The yeah, last, I think we've he did the small one. So, and when he was showing that, I was like, oh, I so know where this is for, like where this is for, and um, yeah, but I did I did those other ones, and I don't think they're good. I think Camilo's ended looking so es que much creo que no las veo. Yeah, no, that's not a popular collection. It's just. Porque está como en una, en, en un mueble, en un, no sé, ¿cómo se llama eso? ¿Qué? Pues es como de, la, las puertas son como de vidrio y tú puedes ver adentro. vitrina? Es, pues no es una vitrina, pero como eso, ese mueble tiene un nombre más formal, más bonito, pero mm, yo le digo un closet. ¿Bife? Pues es como un bife, pero no sé. Mm, un bife, un bife de chorizo. Bife de chorizo, sí. Eh, no, no sé, pero ya tengo curiosidad de verlos. Igual que tengo curiosidad de ver lo de la película. Yeah, la so... Tuya que sale en la yeah, película. yeah, we're not talking about that. So, uh... Ocean Rosalind, Eleven, era? Roslyn, <laughs> we are, um... But how so big my, was my it? So, my answer... Oh, they were very... They were very small. The portrait was probably about that big. I know, I want to see it. Yeah, so it was, uh... But I, I just... I don't think I was a good painter at that moment. Or I don't... Let's just say this. I, I don't think I was good enough to do a painting like that justice, you know, at that moment. Because I did them when I was younger, a lot younger, a lot younger. So I did my best, but I don't think it was a good job. Camilo Vargas, el arquero, mentira. Uh -huh. Dice, hola Nicolás y Dani, un gran saludo. Me encanta siempre el trabajo que hacen en el canal. Quería preguntarte, ¿cómo es, cómo pintabas con la cera? ¿Lo mezclabas con el óleo? Sí, yo hice en cáustica la más tradicional. Si no, si no saben lo que es en cáustica, pueden buscar. Pero básicamente es mezclando cera de abeja. Se puede mezclar con otra cera. Mmm, con una cera que es más quebradiza, más, más dura. Que se llama carna uva. Pero se puede usar la sola cera. Y se tiene que eh, calentar. Y se tiene que mezclar con eh, resina. Resina de mar. Pero no, no barniz de mar, sino la resina. O sea, la resina, el, cri el cristal también se pone a derretir. Eh, y, to y todo se tiene que trabajar en caliente Es súper bonito, es una técnica lindísima Viejísima, viejísima, viejísima eh, Hay pinturas en cera Que tienen como 2.500, 3.000 años O sea, es viejísimo Es de las formas, incluso es de las formas Más antiguas de pintar Que se asemejan a lo que entendemos Como la pintura occidental Como eh, que se... Que, que generó lo que ahora entendemos como pintura contemporánea, o, la, o, o por lo menos la definición de pintura contemporánea que tenemos. Eh, esos retratos de las momias, los retratos de Alfa Yum, es que se llaman, ¿me buscas? A ver. Eh, esos retratos están hechos en, eh, en encáustica, o sea, es una técnica viejísima, viejísima, pero es muy engorrosa, o sea, es súper, es súper, súper compleja. Eh, no es... Li no es no es como, no se presta para un taller pequeño, tiene que estar bien ventilado, es sucio, sí. o sea... a ver, los retratos de El Fayum. De las momias. Sí. Sí, eso todo es en cáustica. Y me, me dices el siglo II. Siglo II, Una sí. locura! Um, espérame a ver si dice... Exageré con 3.000 años. Tiene 2.000 años tiene esos retratos. ¡Una locura! ¡Una locura! O sea, Pero mira, haciendo... dice... Abarcan mediados del siglo I sí. hasta el siglo IV. Sí, sí. O sea, sí bueno, estoy exagerando también con los dos mil años. Pero, pero igual. Pero tiene dos mil años. O sea, hace dos mil años se pintaba de una manera parecida a cómo se pintó. O sea, en el, 
se pintaba así en el siglo I y se volvió a pintar así en el siglo XIII, XIV. No, ni siquiera XIII, XIV. O sea, una locura. Es una locura. Eh, pero, de nuevo, para mí fue como difícil, eh, una, una técnica como súper difícil de manipular. Entonces, lo que yo hice fue empezar a, a, a mezclar te, eh, medios tradicionales y mezclándolos con cera, que eso es totalmente válido. Eso no, eso no, tiene, no hay ningún problema con nada de eso. Entonces, lo que hacía era derretir cera en un medio que tenía aceite polimerizado, barniz de mar y trementina. Y entonces quedaba como un, digamos que un puente entre lo tradicional y lo que eran esos medios sí, 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 es en y ya encontré. ¿Esa pintura? Sí, 100%. Sí. Mm, a ver. Gaby dice, Dani vendiendo a Nicolás, jajaja. Ja, ja. ¿Cómo? ¿Con qué? ¿Con qué? ¿Qué hizo Dani? Pues igual no, sí. O sea, yo creo que tú me vendes a mí, yo te vendo a ti con... Cos ah, ¿será lo de Ocean Eleven? Ah, sí, no, 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 no empecemos. <risa> um, y eh, Gaby dice, Nicolás, de su trabajo Gabriela, de ilustración, señora, ¿qué es lo que más le gustó? O sea, pieza fab ahorita. No sé si pieza, pero me, me encantaba... Creo que no, no había tampoco una pieza favorita, pero lo que sí me encantaba, Gaby, era la cantidad de dibujo que hacía. O sea, era... Sin duda es cuando he dedicado la mayor parte de mi vida a dibujar. Como ese, ese sentimiento era súper bonito. Se me hacía súper, súper lindo. Camilo Vargas dice, wow, es increíble, es impresionante. No, pero... Eh, ¿Qué? No, 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 ah, lo Camilo... Que ah, las momias, los retratos. Sí, sí, sí. Ah. O es, no sé, o también la pintura. No, no, la o pintura, tú. La pintura está bien, pero Yo no sé. No nos, no, nos, no nos descuajemos acá eh, en elogios in, infundados. Irvin Torres said, Hey, Nicolás, my brother Edgar yeah. is visiting and he loves how you articulate your ideas and finds them very interesting. So, shout out to Edgar Torres. Edgar Torres, yeah. Hermano de Irvin. Yeah. Mm, Andrés Gómez dice... Hola Dani y Nico, qué sorpresa verlos por acá un viernes. Sí, Andrés, es que ayer no estuvimos, entonces hoy repusimos. Claro. Y antecitos de irnos. Sí, porque nos vamos el domingo. Uh -huh. mm, Liet said, animation or illustration or whatever it is, if you work for someone else, it's still a job, and where you work and who you work for can make a huge difference. That's always going to be true for any job, yes. Mm. Tani said, I like how the eyes sort of blend in with the shadows. Yeah, I'm not sure of what I want to do with the eyes. <laughs> so I've been, I'm in, I've been in avoiding mode and I'm going to have to try to solve now. Eh, Mirta Siomeli Sandin dice, una pregunta. Sí, Mirta. Cuando perdiste un poco la inseguridad de principias principiante Nunca. y pasaste a tal vez soy un artista a mí me cuestiona soltarme y confiar más en lo que produzco a diario mm -hmm. es que creo que esa es la pregunta ah es que el signo de pregunta está ¿Cuándo? al revés ya 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 no ¿Cuándo? cuando perdiste un no. poco la cuando perdiste un Eso. poco la sí sí es que no tiene el de la no importa mm. es que el no vainazo que no, le echaron es que a no la pobre la Mirta tilde. cuando perdiste un poco ¿Cuándo perdiste? ¿Cuándo perdiste un poco la inseguridad de principiaste, principiante uh. y, pi, y pasaste... No, mi amor, Mirta, oye mejor es español en Estocolmo. ¿Y pasaste a tal vez soy un artista? A mí me cuesta soltarme y confiar más en lo que produzco a diario. Eh, gracias, Dani. Y Mirta dice, difícil con el sueco. <risa> <risa> sí, no, yo... Eh... Uh. Si ¿Sí me entendiste o la repito. No, la verdad me está, la verdad no pude pararte bolas. ¿Cuándo eh, perdiste no, un poco no, no, la inseguridad no, no, metas, de principiante? No, no, no sometas principiante. Eso, por favor. Y perdí y que no, no, mi amor, no, mi amor. ¿Tú te Andrés imaginas? Gómez dice, "Ja, ja que enredada más brava." Sí. ¿Tú te imaginas tú en el colegio como que te pusieran a leer en la iglesia? Es que en mi colegio no había una iglesia, pero sí. Ah. Nada, oye, ¿tu colegio no era eso? Hacía misas a veces, pero en el coliseo, mm. pero no había iglesia. <risa> el coliseo. 
en, el, en la mitad del partido de básquet. ¿Había iglesia? La capilla. Había una capilla, pero era chiquitica, o sea, era como ah, para como dos iglesia. personas. ¿Para dos personas? Mm. <risa> o sea, era chiquitica, no era... No era que cupiera todo el colegio ahí, mm. ni siquiera un salón Bueno, pero completo. me despisté, ¿me repites y la pregunta, Y así dice, tú puedes, Dani. Gracias. ¿Me repites? Qué pena, en serio me despisté. Pero espérate, porque no sé por qué no estoy pidiendo. Ya. ¿Cuándo perdiste un poco la inseguridad de principiante y pasaste a tal vez soy un artista? Eh, yo no sé. Te... <ríe> Mirta decía, chicos, la pregunta. <risa> <risa> eh... <risa> Y de pronto lo que respondo es como, como no responder ni siquiera. Eh, ¿Tú te sentiste en algún momento, o sea, tú sentiste que eras estudiante y luego artista? No. Es que yo tampoco, o sea, yo creo que yo nunca dije, ah, ya me gradué y soy artista. O yo nunca dije, ah, eh, esta es mi primera exposición, entonces ahora sí soy artista. No. Eh, yo... Yo no sé, yo entendía que yo era artista, pues, siempre, no sé, como, no sé, de pronto por el solo hecho de haber querido estudiar, pues era una, yo más bien me entendía, era como artista joven, pero, pero no, no sentía que no era, o sea, nunca decía, no, yo no soy artista, mm. porque tampoco yo es que sintiera, o yo sentía como, ah, todavía no vivo del arte, digamos, yo podía decir eso como artista joven. Pero yo creo que pero igual hay nunca... artistas que no viven del arte. Y sí, son esa, artistas. No, a lo que voy, es, exacto. O sea, a lo es que voy como es que... que es muy difícil uno decir, esto es lo que hace que uno diga exacto. como, me gradué de artista, o sea, me gradué de estudiante artista. Como puedo tener ya en mi cabeza que soy artista y no estudiante. Sí, es que yo no creo que, yo nunca ni tuve esa idea en la cabeza, ni transicioné hacia esa idea. Sí, yo creo que o sea, cuando uno estudia artes, uno puede decir, decir claramente, obvi pues obviamente, como este fue mi periodo de estudiante, pero uno sí. no puede decir este fue mi periodo donde empecé a ser artista. Si ¿Sí me entiendes, uno puede decir aquí empezaron y culminaron mis estudios, porque es súper fácil mirar dónde, pero no es fácil mirar dónde pasa eso con el ser artista. Incluso a mí me parece muy curioso, yo me acuerdo, eso pasó en primer semestre, mmm, una profesora, a ver, había una niña que decía que ella era artista, como que, no me acuerdo si era, como que escribió que era artista en algún lado, ¿Sí? y me acuerdo que la profesora dijo, no, ella no es artista, ella no puede decir que es artista todavía, ya está estudiando para ser artista, y yo siempre me cuestionaba, pero, o sea, ¿el título es entonces lo que lo vuelve un artista? No, porque hay artistas que son empíricos, entonces no tiene sentido eso que se está diciendo. sí. No yo... Y, no, y yo me acuerdo que eso me quedó mucho en la cabeza porque yo decía, yo no siento que sea así, porque yo siento que un artista no es como un médico que necesita estudiarlo para hacerlo, mm. entonces sí, pero sí, eso me, me quedó en la cabeza, me acuerdo, porque pues no creo que sea así, o sea, si, si ella eh, consideraba que quería poner que era artista, pues ¿por qué no? O sea, ¿qué hace la diferencia de ponerlo en primer semestre a ponerlo... Eh, dos años, tres años, seis años después de graduado. Sí, no. A uno no le dicen, des, con, después de un diploma, no le dicen, ahora sí ahora puede marcar sí, sus artista, cuadernos sí. como artista. No, no, no sé. Bueno, ese argumento se me hacía re pobre. Eh, pero es que además es como innecesario. Uno se puede poner a pelear 15 horas por eso o puede sencillamente decir, bueno, todos estemos de acuerdo en que son ustedes son es, artistas jóvenes y ya. Porque si fuera de artistas, no sé, o sea, si fuera como de pensamiento artístico, yo conocía estudiantes en primer semestre que ya eran más artistas que muchos sí. profes que eran re mediocres. Pues, y de nuevo, artista joven, yo creo que también es como, no sé, o sea, es difícil uno definir un artista joven porque puede que haya alguien que diga, pues no sé, tengo 70 años y empecé a pintar. Claro. Pero yo siento que soy un artista joven porque hasta ahorita estoy empezando sí, en joven. el mundo del arte. Entonces no es algo como que se denota por la edad. Tampoco, por no eso. Es, por eso. Y, y, y comenzar una carrera, puede una persona comenzarla a los 40 años. Sí, o puede alguien de 17 Exacto. años ser Y son fundamentalmente absurdo. artistas jóvenes. Exacto. Sí, la, la edad cronológica no creo que, que tenga, afecte esa, esa apreciación sobre quién es un artista joven. Pero... 
Sí, no sé, no sé. Pero ya, volviendo a la pregunta para, para poder eh, cerrarlo ahí, uh -huh. yo, yo no, y, y creo que es tu caso también, yo, yo nunca sentí esa... Um, yo nunca sentí que existiera como eh, algo que significaba que si lograba atravesar como ese umbral, sí. me convertía en artista. Sí, sí, y, sí. O, o que solo hasta que lo atravesara me iba a convertir en artista. Hmm. O sea, y no creo que sea, no creo que tenga nada que ver con vivir de lo que uno hace, ni la cantidad de conocimiento que uno posee, ni la cantidad de estudios que uno posee. Yo creo que no tiene nada que ver con eso. Nada, sí. nada, nada que ver con eso. Eh... Gaby dice, yo todavía no me creo el cuento de ser artista, me lo creía más cuando estudiaba. Sí, a mí no, sí, no, no me, no sé. Mm, y Mirta dijo, gracias Dani por tu respuesta y a ti Nico por el intention. <risa> ¿Cómo así? No, me pero mató. Esto, esto lo había dicho antes de que dijeras ahorita que ibas a concluir la respuesta. No, pero o sea, me eso... mató, Mirta. Es como, Dani, gracias por tu respuesta increíble. Y Nicolás, pues Gracias la por estar ahí. Gracias por apoyar a Dani siempre y todos los días. No, Mirta, me mató. Eh, Andrés Gómez dice, como con todo, pasa que es el hábito el que nos permite ser y sentirnos algo, ¿no? Yo creo, o sea, es que yo... Sí, pero es que ¿sabes qué pasa? Que yo creo que eh, como la idea de ser artista no es como una meta. No. O sea, no es como llegar a la meta, porque es que yo creo que es siempre un proceso. O sea, cuando uno está estudiando, uno está, uno ya es un artista en su proceso como artista. Cuando uno lleva 40 años pintando, sigue siendo un artista en ese mismo proceso. Solo que está en puntos distintos. Pero no es como que uno diga, pase la meta, ahora sí soy artista. Como coroné, ¿no? Yo no siento que sea así, sino que es como un proceso que sigue y sigue y sigue. Entonces, por eso es difícil uno como decir, desde acá soy artista y desde acá no, pues porque nada de eso es claro, porque sigue en movimiento ese proceso de ser artista. Sí, porque si fuera aprendizaje, pues yo todos los días que pinto aprendo, uh -huh. todos los días. Nunca he parado de, de sentir que es un espacio donde aprendo. Uh -huh. Entonces, uno no podría decir... La ausencia de conocimiento es lo que lo hace usted no artista. Uh -huh. O uno no podría, o sería hartísimo decir, la falta de experiencia lo hace usted no artista. ¿No? Uh -huh. Entonces, ¿cuánta experiencia? ¿Cuántos años? O sea, ¿cuánto me tengo que esperar para que yo pueda decir o para que la sociedad pueda decir que es que entonces soy artista? Exacto, es que no hay como parámetros exactos de decir, a las 48 pinturas se vuelve uno artista, se vuelve uno pintor, ¿no? Sí. Nada de eso. Eh... Mirta dice, sí, pues, no fue la idea. O sea, que no fue la idea matarte eh, con la respuesta. Yo creo que sí, Mirta. Todo bien. <risa> eh, Todo bien, Mirta. So, let's see. Um, y yo diciendo que Cuba tan linda. <risa> eh... Mirta dice, me gusta que se ve un rostro en la paleta de, de pintorra. No Puck Abstraction. No, creo que eso es en... En no. sueco. Sí, no sé qué es eso. Sí, Mirta, toca, toca ponerle dos idiomas al, al celular para que no autocorrija a sueco. No, y ahora dice, no me gustaba lo que ambos contestaron ambasad. No, Mirta. Mir Mirta. ¿Qué pasó? Mirta. ¿Es el autocorrector? Yo, o, o está si no haciendo me voy a mucho, preocupar. O si no está haciendo mucho frío y ya está borracha, Mirta. Entonces, por favor. Me voy a preocupar por Mirta. Porque es que lo que decía antes era... Me gusta que se ven nu rostro en la paleta de pintorra. Un, nu poc abstraction per olof. Un poco abstracto. Tet en color. Olof on tet, ese sí no sé. El resto sí la logro descifrar, pero olof on tet... Entonces, mm. Mirta dice, me gusta lo que ambos contestaron. Gracias, Mirta. Listo. Eh, Andrés Gómez dice, ser artista es más un devenir que un momento puntual. Uno deviene artista más que ser artista. Eh, y Mirta dice, 
pero tiene buen color. No, Mirta, ya estamos, <risa> o sea... Ah, un poco de abstracción, pero tiene buen color. O sea, pero Love Bonitet en color era, pero ah, tiene un buen color. Me es gusta que Love Bonitet. El... <risa> me gusta, no sé por qué, pero me gusta Olof Love Bonitet. En color. Pero es per guión o Love. Pero Love Bonitet. O Love Bonitet para ti también, Lindita. <risa> Gracias. Eh, a ver, ¿qué dicen por acá? Eh, Panacotic was saying some time ago, Chris Legaspi sometimes mentions his theory that the less you render an eye, the more realistic it looks. Uh, sure, like your brain will complete it more. So that's always, um, it's good to play with that for sure. I mean, if you do it too much, you're avoiding it. But if you can do it when it works, um... He's, he's to or they're totally right. I'm not super aware of their work, so apologize. Mirta dice, es la tabla, se fue al sueco. Y mandó caritas felices mm -hmm. y caritas riendo. Se <laughs> sí, fue, sí, fue sí, al me suelo. <laughs> <laughs> sí, me imaginé que okay, la tabla se ha ido al sueco o Mirta se había ido o al suelo. O Mirta se fue al suelo. <laughs> Esos chistes, Nicolás. Después del, eh, del vodka. ¿Qué, toman, ¿Qué se toma uno en... Eh, Suecia. En Suecia, Mirta. O sea, aguardiente es a Colombia como que no, o es al no, sueco. No, pero es que Mirta, ron es a Cuba. No, pues yo estoy como colombiana respondiendo. Sí, pero pues le toca, toca. Pero Mirta dice no bebo. Pero, pero bueno, nosotros tampoco. No. Pero, eh, pero la gente que sí, que toma allá? Vodka. Un vodka, dice sí. Mirta. Sí, tiene que ser. Vodka sueca. Eh, a ver R Y A ver, dice Vodka seca, sueca mm. Y Ron Habana no. Club eh, Cuba, supongo Claro, Ajá, claro. Eh, Mirta dice Absolute Vodka eh, Liad said If you put sunglasses on everyone You can avoid eyes altogether And hands in pockets <laughs> no hands. Um, so, uh, eh, Darie, Darian Gallardo dice, eh, hablaron de mi país, jaja, <laughs> Cuba y Ron es lo mismo. Muy bien, muy bien. Mm. Tani was saying, are you guys watching any shows recently or any new true crime stories? So, any show we're watching that we crashed? Yeah. Uh, that you guys suggested on one stream. Uh, we are only in chapter three. Episode three, yeah. Episode, episode. episode three. <laughs> episode three. Yeah. And what other uh, shows have we been seeing? Uh, right now, just that. Mm. And we're going to watch uh, Better Call Saul uh, when we have a little more yes. time and um, when we can concentrate a little bit. Because right now we're going to travel, so uh, it just feels like, oh, my God. Um, so maybe when we get back, we can watch like three episodes in yeah. a row and that's going to feel better. Um. Yeah, and of true crime, I'm just watching my uh, Netflix continue watching and I see one that's called Catching Killers. So, of course, that, that's not uh, something that Nicolas sees, something that I was looking. Uh, oh, we did watch the uh, Medium. Oh, guy. yeah. Yeah. Life After Death. Yeah. We watched that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you guys believe in that? Have you have you known? Do you know of that dude? And have you seen the? Have you seen the show? The show? Maybe. Is that something you believe in? Because I'm coming. I, I'll be honest here. I don't believe in anything. Well, uh, no, of course I believe in something, but uh, you believe in? No, I, it's just that you know this, but I don't think that there's life after death, or you know. 
ghosts or spirits or um i mean i'm not gonna say aliens aliens for sure it, it would be stupid of me to say that the you know in the vastness of the universe there's not another you know civilization somewhere um it'd be ridiculous not to at least in terms of um uh, statistics you have to say oh there's got to be but um but in terms of of just something you know this this life being more than this no for the longest time i've i've i'm and i still am i think the at my core i don't think there's anything um but that dude does you know does make you wonder Kakeiro said the one with Tyler Henry. Yes. Yeah. Impressionant. <laughs> <laughs> no, that dude, there's something, there's something different about so, that dude. Yeah. So let's see. Liet said, no, I don't believe in life after death or ghosts or any of that. Uh, Brady Fellow said, have not seen the show, but there was a show called Medium about a detective on the state. I live in who solved crimes by speaking with the dead. Uh, it was based on a real person too. Uh, Gaby dice no lo he visto, pero creo full en eso, en energía de reencarnación y personas que se quedan vagando en la tierra después de la muerte. Y Kakeiro dice I love him. Sí. Yeah, there's 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 something about that dude that is. Like, you don't get the feeling. He doesn't live like somebody who is just, you know, fooling people. Yeah. He doesn't talk like somebody who fools no, people. No, and he gets facts yeah. that wouldn't be easy. I know, but but aside from any of that, that anyone could argue like, oh, he just reads. He's just super intelligent at reading people. So if you give them a, like a little bit, he can be vague enough to make you believe that he's telling you okay. a lot. Oh, so you're talking more about like the money aspect of right, it. Right, right, like right. Because how he Because uh, I think historically, the people that have been like charlatans, like that's what they do. They just fool people and into believing that, that they can do that. And nowadays, you know, if you can get into somebody's Facebook page or Instagram page, you, you know, if you give somebody who knows what they're doing half an hour, Oh my God, they know the name of your mother, your grandmother. They know where you, you know, what you do, what you work, what you like, what you don't like, uh, who you're missing. So, but this dude doesn't, there's nothing about this dude that makes it feel like that is his end goal. And even there's times that the person who scheduled the reading, it's not even the person they're going to read. Because we, we saw that. Yeah, exactly. So they yeah. don't even know what to... I mean, if if someone says, no, they're fooling. Like, it's all a fool. They don't have the way to know who they're going to read. So they don't have to a way to get the info beforehand. Yeah, it's And they very... also... Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. No, and it's also... I mean, we saw when people were saying, like, I can't believe you're saying this because there's no way you could know this. Like... I'm the only one who knows this that you're talking about. So, um, yeah, I mean, it did. Um, sí, Mirta dice, pero los secretos que nadie sabe, nadie sabe cómo lo considera. Sí, es que eso era lo que estábamos hablando, como que hay cosas que uno dice, lo podría sacar de internet, de averiguar a la persona, pero hay cosas que no. Sí, hay cosas que, que, que decía... no. Yo incluso que soy como el más incrédulo y siempre pienso que es una persona si simplemente siendo como un charlatán y, y está es como accediendo a información que es súper fácil de acceder y el resto es como jugar con, con lo que contesta la persona y con la poca información que dice y cómo utiliza la, la poca información como para um, llevar la conversación hacia sitios donde la haga sonar como si es mucha información, como que hace que la persona misma complete la información que él eh, como que está insinuando o que, que se está planteando, porque eso es lo que pasa con la grandísima mayoría de las personas que son, que son o, o que dicen ser como mediums o que dicen comunicarse. Pero en este caso... Pero sí. acá hay demasiadas cosas que por lo menos en una persona como yo que soy tan incrédula, me siembran dudas, me siembran muchísimas dudas de, de cómo, o sea... 
cómo se hace esto. Igual es un programa, ¿no? O sea, igual puede estar editado, igual puede estar... O sea, hay mil cosas que uno dice, bueno... Pero uno ve la reacción de las personas que están sí. ahí y son reacciones genuinas, o sea... No sé, igual es que el ser humano también es tan sensible que puede reaccionar sin quererlo, puede reaccionar así a muchísimas cosas. Pero no, yo, yo no. le... De nuevo, yo siendo tan, tan, tan incrédulo, le decía a Dani, uff, hay cosas... Hay cosas que no sé. Sí, no, pues incluso tú decías a veces como no, no. paremos de ver porque es que esto me está como revolviendo todo lo claro, que claro. yo creo. Porque claro, si por... hay cosas que uno de verdad dice, uff, ¿cómo? O sea... Sí. sí. Sí, en el momento en el que uno dice, en el momento en el que uno empieza a decir, esto puede pasar, uno, uno, uno dice como no un momento, o sea, ¿qué, qué está pasando? O sea, sí. ¿esto cómo funciona entonces? Sí, porque yo creo que en tu caso es distinto, porque yo sí siempre he dicho que yo no sé en qué creo, pero yo le tengo miedo a todo. <risa> <risa> o sea, cualquier cosa que me pueda asustar, Tus creencias me da son, pánico. Son fear-based. O sea, si a mí me dicen hay fantasmas, me dan miedo los fantasmas. No sé si existen, si no, pero me dan miedo. Eh, hay monstruos, me dan miedo los monstruos, todo eso. Entonces, yo creo que mi posición es distinta a la tuya, viendo el programa. Además, yo soy súper sensible con cualquier historia. Sí. Entonces, yo obviamente era un mar de lágrimas en... Pero tú es que iban en el título y ya estabas... O sea, tú eras empapada en <risa> Ay, lágrimas. Ay, no, pero es que hay historias muy tristes. No, había que historias me... fuertes. No, había cosas Uf. muy... Sí, entonces yo... I'm... Just, just to complete this in English. I, I was thinking, either this dude really is special. I mean, it's extraordinary in a way that... It's hard to understand. But I do think he is. Or I think he's like a psychopath. Like, he just doesn't realize how no. much he... Or he, he convinces himself that he's, he's helping people. But, you know, it's a life that is replete with, like, lies. I mean, which, may, which would, in my mind, would make him a psycho. Like, that's, you know, you're not, like, a good human being if you... If But I do think he is. He, well, we can't. No, you know, no, no, we can't say. no, he is a medium, not oh, okay. a good human being, but I do think he is real, I like, don't, yeah, I mean, it's, um, because it's weird, I, I don't think, it is weird, if, if he was, like, a, I mean, you're saying it, like, kind of harsh, but if he was, a, like, a psychopath, I mean, I don't think he could access the information he access, still, it's tough, I think it's tough, but if you, like, again, if you give a hacker half an hour, They are, they're, they can get info from you. Like, they can get ridiculous amounts of info on you. Mm. So. But yes and no. Yeah, but it's like. Because think about all the money he would have to waste on searching, would, like searching people before the reading. Right. Like all it, money and, and everything that's already accessible. But you're right. You're, what you're saying is like. Because um, he was doing readings. Even in the a last thing, the last thing that happens. Oh, it's like okay, stop. It. Like premonitory, which yeah. is like super scary. It's like okay, stop this. Like stop it. That's not even funny. Like. Mm, Liat said, if someone is a quote unquote medium, I hundred percent assume they are faking it. They are so good at cheating and fooling people. Mm. Yeah, I think so. You should watch it, Leah. Yeah, Just you should the, watch that. You know, that. watch it like uh, like you would watch anything. But, but um, you know, and I would say, I wouldn't say like, oh, be open. No, no, no. Just watch it. Like, I was watching it thinking, okay, what are we going to, like, this is, this is going to be a show. Yeah, because I started the, like, I, I played that and you were like, okay, I mean. And you were like trying to, like, you started watching the series thinking like, this is all a lie. Yeah, like I'm, I'm always just seeing someone trying to, like, laugh about other people trying to like say lies and make them believe he has a power. But then you were like, "Well, I don't know." I mean, Leah on my defense, I mean, I'm not defending anything, but there's been people like that throughout history. Oh yeah, history, so. that fooled people a hundred percent. Yeah, but in, they, in I would say that this is different. human beings yeah. that are horrendous and will do anything for like a dollar like they could care less if mm. if 
they're playing with your feelings or they don't care. They don't care. Yeah. But that to me is a psycho. Like you are a psychopath. Yeah. Leah said, what is it called? It's called Life After Death. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Kakeiro dice... Yeah. Kakeiro Rodriguez. Kakeiro dice, ja, 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 desde hace tiempo lo veo con mi mamá cuando tenía un show en E y a mí verlo en Netflix. Es muy impresionante que el man logra saber lo que el man... No. Es ma... ¿Qué me Whoa. está pasando? Es muy impresionante. Mm. ¿Sabes qué? Dime. Voy a volver a mi tamaño de siempre. 1.50. No, pues nada. A mi tamaño de letra de ah, siempre. Ah, disculpa. Ahora sí. Es que lo tenía más chiquito, pero... Pero dejemos la bobada. Soy más viejita. Los ojos no me dan. K.K. Rowe dice, es muy impresionante que el man logra saber porque son como cosas súper específicas que le dice a alguna persona y la gente queda como, wow. Sí. Um... Undines dice, pienso que la vida, compaginando todos sus aspectos, es más misteriosa de lo que nosotros permitimos entrar en nuestro diario vivir. Decir un no rotundo de que X cosa no existe o un sí rotundo de que, de que Y cosa no existe es entrar en ideología y pretender conocer los aspectos de la vida slash mundo slash vivir. No he visto el programa, pero sí he conocido personas que hacen algo similar a lo que está persona del programa hace. Eh, Gaby dice, ¿ustedes no han tenido experiencias paranormales? No. Ninguna. No, no, no. No, yo no he visto un fantasma no. en mi vida. Y no vuelvas a decir, Nicolás ni siempre espíritu. dice, si hay un fantasma que si me jale los pies. Si hay un fantasma deambulando en esta casa, en este edificio, por favor, que se me aparezca. Ay, no, a mí me daría Me cambiaría la vida. Es que a mí me cambiaría todo lo que creo. Pero que si se aparezca, pues sí, cuando sí tú se aparece. Si se aparece. O sea, no, a, cua, no yo mientras no lo vea. te bañas. Yo no lo vea y que no te haga nada malo. Pero ¿y por qué me va a hacer algo malo? Pues yo no sé. No, ¿tanto ¿un fantasma? No molestas que venga y venga, viene bravo. No, ¿y que me va a robar el celular? Eso es lo peor. Eso es como lo más. No, por favor. Eh, Gaby dice: Una persona súper especial en mi vida no se llama a sí misma Miriam pero hemos hablado y ella ve y escucha espíritus y siente muchas cosas inexplicables. No le veo lío a creer que hay gente que está más abierta a otras energías y planos. Sí, pero lo duro, no estoy diciendo, Gaby, no estoy diciendo que es su amiga especial, pero, o sea, hay gente que hace exactamente eso que usted escribió y tiene esquizofrenia. Entonces, es súper complejo. O sea, ¿qué, cómo, ¿cómo en...? ¿Cómo sabe uno que una, una persona es una cosa y otra co persona es otra cosa? Súper difícil. Porque este, no pongamos el ejemplo de la amiga de Gaby, obviamente, pero este joven, uno puede decir, no, es esquizofrénico. Es que estoy oyendo, estoy viendo, estoy... O sea, en cualquier otro caso, uno dice, oiga, usted necesita ayuda. Pero, mm. pero en esto uno es como, uff, ¿qué está pasando? Dice... Said, Liad was saying... Here's the thing. I don't believe in the afterlife. Therefore, it has to be fake unless I'm wrong. And I would need something more convincing than one guy for that. But I'll take a look. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm part of, like, I'm, I'm with you. And I'm sure we would coincide in many things. But um, I, I don't. I, I, even, even though I can't understand many of the things that happen in that show, I think fundamentally I don't. I haven't stopped believing in the things that I believe in because I think the things that I believe in, you know, are, are actually more encompassing than just saying like, Oh, my uh, father died and I just want to talk to him. And it's like, to me, that is so, um, uh, like we believe the universe is about us. Like all these things to me, Just tell me that we believe that for some reason, the universe, the entire universe has to do with us. Us as a species, us as a more evolved species, we're more intelligent than other animals. Um, we think ourselves so damn special. And um, I I just don't, I, whenever I see these things, it's like, why, why do you think you're special? Like, why can't, you know... Like, if this is true, like, I, I would love to be able to hear of a dinosaur spirit. Because he talks, he talks to a dog. He talks to a spirit of a dog. 
No, he sees. Okay, the he spirit sees of the spirit of a dog. Of a dog. I would love dog. to if he, f- he feels the spirit of a dinosaur, because you know it's probably there. I mean, they they were here in this world for far more than what we're ever going to be in. Yeah, and I would like to clarify that we are just talking about our uh, perceptions of that, because I know it's a sensitive uh, topic for some people with oh, yeah. beliefs. So uh, we are not trying to say like this is the reality or this is what happens. No, I mean, we're just being open open about a TV show that we saw. Yeah. In, so, fact, I, in fact, I'm being, in my case, I'm being super open. Yeah. Like it was a show that made me feel like I don't get this. I really don't get this. And mm. um, and. Because I feel deep inside that if I start saying, okay, this is possible, then it means that, you know, everything, pretty much everything that I believe in makes no sense. Yeah. But we do respect a lot. Oh. People's beliefs. Oh, my mother is the so. most religious person in this planet. Like, don't, like, yeah, please. You, you do you in terms of your own spirituality and your own beliefs. Please. That's. You know, nobody here is going to change any anything of like that. But it, it's just um, it was it was uh, it was something. Gaby dice, ja, 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 supongo que después de que a uno le lean muy bien y le pasen mensajes correctos, uno empieza a dejar de creer que es esquizofrenia. Ja, ja. Sí, de pronto es eso, ¿no? Como que lo, lo que lo convence, es como que todos necesitamos esa experiencia que convence. Eh, yo desde la incredulidad siempre decía... Ah, de pronto son mensajes suficientemente vagos como para que uno o los complete uno o uno como que o uno le empieza a dar pistas a la persona y la persona dice sí, sí, mira, es, sí era eso, exacto, es, sí. Pero es que a veces no hay pistas. Pero o es sea, que charla hay charlatanes, hay, hay gente que es muy charlatana. Pero estoy hablando de él. Ah, no, yo sí, pues yo no puedo hablar de la, la persona cercana a Gaby, o sea, obviamente no, pero, pero yo también te, eh, he tenido experiencias en, en mi vida eh, familiar y hay veces, o sea, si uno da un paso atrás, hay veces uno se da cuenta de, wow, estas personas como que juegan, porque creo que han sido personas que juegan, juegan como con esa, esa, ese momento de debilidad, del, de, de vulnerabilidad del ser humano y cuando el ser humano está vulnerable, pues puede, o sea, puede creer que entendió cosas que ni siquiera se dijeron. O sea, yo me acuerdo escuchando la misma información y cómo yo la había entendido totalmente distinto a cómo la había percibido, digamos, otro miembro de mi familia. Y como yo dije, no, pero no dijeron eso. O sea, eso, literalmente eso no fue lo que dijo. Literalmente lo que esta persona dijo fue esto. Y ya la percepción de esa información era otra. Entonces, no sé, o sea, yo, yo, yo creo que soy incrédulo también con... O sea, yo te, uno tiene también derecho a ser incrédulo. Incluso yo creo que hay más ejemplos de charlatanes y de gente súper mala en el mundo aprovechándose de gente que es, tiene dolor y que el dolor es el que lo lleva a eso, a gente que de verdad es extraordinaria, como puede ser este, este pelado, o sea, como puede ser este muchacho que es... De, yo, dentro de toda mi ignorancia, digo, hay algo que me dice, uy, esta persona es distinta. Como que hay algo que me dice, juepucha, es que es, dis- es distinto. Es que yo, yo te decía, es que si fuera un charlatán, como que habría muchas cosas distintas de la dinámica, distintas de la manera como vive, mm. distintas de la relación con la mamá, que la mamá es la que lo lleva a los sitios, distintas de la personalidad de la mamá, que no son personas como que quieren plata. O sea, no son personas como, si ¿sí me entiendes, como que uno no siente que estén haciendo esto es porque se van a llenar de plata. Sí. Que normalmente las personas que engañan es porque quieren plata. O sea, eso no hay n- ninguna otra razón. Pues, e incluso cuando... El ejemplo de la profesora del colegio. Que es como... Sí. Ni siquiera hay plata de por medio. O sea, esto es... Él acercándose y diciéndole, oiga, yo sé que tal cosa pasó. O sea... Eh, sí, es... Gaby dice, sí, Gaby dice, obvio, es súper válido ser incrédulo. Yo no le creería a cualquiera, la verdad. Um, so, 
So. So, so. Mm. Oh, but I was going to tell you. Yes, please. That before you said we were watching that show. Yeah. I saw. Oh, you saw another one. I Not saw. With me. No, no, no. Oh. I saw there is a new season of a <laughs> lame show <laughs> we see. Sunset. Yeah. It's <laughs> now live, all the chapters. So today right we now? have. Yeah, we have a marathon. Oh my God. We're not sleeping tonight. Nope. No. Nope. That could be. Not working, not sleeping. That could be. Because I, I think that, that show, Selling I find sunset? it fascinating just to see houses that were never, ever, 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 ever in a million years going to even like step a foot in them. Yeah, because like, we love. We can't afford them. We'll never even like, we'll never even go to Los Angeles to look at them. No, but it's like, it's like window shopping. It's, it's like yeah. looking at things and just admiring the things. It's, it's like not like even wanting that to be your reality because I don't think that's what happened with us. We just oh no play no, no. a lot like we because in that show they my reality show I, I'll tell you my reality when I look at this apartment it's like oh my god I I hope that life gives us a chance to be able to rent this apartment for a couple more years. Yeah, well I've told that's you always if I get the lottery I would. I would like to be here. That's just bad business, though. But I get you. <laughs> but um, Selling Sunset. No, that's I was like going to say that in Selling Sunset, they show the houses and then they just say like the square meter, the number of bathrooms, bathrooms, bedrooms. Square feet. Yeah. Yeah. Meters is for us. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they pause a little bit while they're showing it. Or Danny pauses so literally the video. So I always the pause video. the video after they show that like that's our dynamic <laughs> and we are trying to guess that's a danny game <laughs> the prize no but you like it too it's like it, and it's always like okay 10 bedroom a uh, 12 bathroom yeah so how much yeah and, and we're on like this area. well according to the neighborhood it's not that expensive yeah. the neighborhood so and it's got to be 12 million dollars <laughs> yeah and we started we start acting like we have a uh, facebook stock yeah, and if uh, we have idea that we bought like in, yeah. in 1996 yeah and sometimes and we're, we're like, like oh, i mean um, for that me price yeah. i wouldn't like that bathroom for yeah. that price so actually yeah we're like uh, yeah. real estate um, you know, we know our real estate, uh, but sometimes we're close. But I think the only reason that we're close is because we've we've watched so much trashy stuff like that that we kind of already know. Yeah, but we have to say, I have to say, you uh, love that show. That's got to be one of your top five I shows. I think it's I just feel. funny, but. I, you love it too. I mean, we've seen this is going to be the, uh, I the, like no, the drama, the season number five. Yeah, because I was going to say that you said something super funny once. You said, like, I came from the houses, I stayed for the drama. <laughs> and I just loved it because that's 100% true. Yeah, there's a lot of drama. So it's a terrible, I mean, it's a lame show, like a reality. And we love it. Oh, it's 100% like rich people problems. Like, there's not an ounce of, like, okay, this is how normal people live. Yeah. There's nothing. Nothing. nothing but I don't know why. Nothing about that show is, like, oh, yeah, I can totally understand what it feels to throw a party and look for a zebra. Like, there's <laughs> nothing. Not, nowhere in my life am I ever going to feel, like, yes, I see myself in this. Yeah. But it's funny. But it's, like, okay, this is how a subset of rich people live and the things that are important to them which are ridiculous and we're super invested with the drama because when oh, the, they uh, show like the preview of the next season we're always like oh my god yeah. nicolas we have yeah. to google this yeah and they were horrible <laughs> it's like oh my god they were horrible to her like that was <laughs> that was not right that was not right yeah <sighs> eh, so so gabi dice el drama uniendo familias y estrellitas <laughs> Eh, y Gaby dice cambiando de tema un poquito un poco nomás por favor antier estaban hablando de chismecitos de animales pero me tuve que ir antes de dar mi granito de arena tonto ¿puedo? jaja ja. claro chismes de animales pues estamos hablando ah, de la de fuerza los... del mordisco de los animales ah sí. sí por favor claro Gaby vamos a esperar hasta que Gaby escriba Vamos a esperar en silencio. En silencio. Ok. En silencio. Eso no es silencio. 
Pero Estás pues, cantando ay. llenando el silencio. Pues. Llenando... No, iba a cantar yo también, pero no. ¿Y vas a seguir cantando? ¿Tú no. sabes que tu abuelo es fan de sí. música llanera? Es que he sufrido tantas penas mm. por ser mi alma tan buena. ¿Qué será? No, ven. <risa> yeah. A ver, Gaby. No, para que Gaby paremos se fue, de Gaby cantar. Se volvió, sí, se, se volvió a ir. No, chao. O está, o está full. Sí, en 1936. Vamos, Gaby. Mm. Pero sí tenemos que verla. Sí, señora. 100%, antes de viajar. Yes. Terminarla. Yes. Yes. Mm. En el colegio, dice Gaby, mm. tenía clase de cosmología huitoto. No me acuerdo de muchas cosas, pero era una clase divertida. Y una de las cosas que sí recuerdo de sus clases era ¿Qué hacer si te encuentras un jaguar? Voy, espérenme, jajaja. Ja, ja. Entonces, ¿qué hacer si te encuentras un jaguar? A ver, aprendimos que o sea, por lo menos con la... un tigre. Si te encuentras un jaguar... No, si te encuentras un tigre, aprendimos ayer. Bueno, pero... No te puedes orinar porque cree que le estás marcando territorio. Entonces, si estés muy asustado, no te puedes orinar. 100%. Mm, si tienes chancletas... Ah, no, eso era con un cocodrilo. Mm. Eh, trata de no pegarle para que él no entienda que estás empezando una pelea, pero a la vez... Pégale, <ríe> si puedes, pégale en los ojos o en la nariz, muy fuerte. Bueno, eso no es al tigre, si les pero pegas ya te mal, No, te eso es a todos. No, pues sí, pero, pero no. Subir a un árbol muy alto, me acuerdo tigre, que decía. El tigre no trepa, el jaguar 100% trepa, mm -hmm. o sea. A ver, Gaby dice. Pero, ¿puedo decir una cosa? Claro. O sea, obviamente, si Gaby lo contextualizó con cosmogonía huitoto. Cosmología. Bueno, perdón. Eh, cosmología, cosmología, uh -huh. bueno, cosmología co huitoto, con cosmología huitoto, eh, pues esto debe tener algún carácter esotérico, yo creo, no, bo, ni, ni siquiera estoy viendo qué va a responder Gaby, pero yo estoy pensando que esto, esto tiene, o sea, bueno, de pronto los huitoto estuvieron mucho más en contacto con un jaguar que lo que, que uno, uno va a sí. estar en contacto, entonces eh, desecharlo porque suene a esotérico, Sería una barbaridad porque pues la experiencia la tienen son ellos. O sea, yo, yo he visto como cuatro jaguares en mi vida, todos en un zoológico. A Entonces, ver, Gaby dice. Que siga Gaby, sí. El man decía que si uno se encuentra un jaguar, cosa mm. X, ¿qué le pasaría a uno en cualquier momento? Cualquier obvio? lado, en el éxito, por ejemplo. Voy uno, a comprar leche, jaguar. Uno, lo que tiene que hacer es mirar al jaguar a los ojos, mirarlo con toda la fuerza y decirle con la mirada, yo mando. ¿Cómo se Porque mira? obvio sería lo que uno haría en ese momento. ¿Cómo mira uno con toda la fuerza? Como... Pero algo chistoso que decían ahí, pues que de pronto puede tener que ver con esto. Decían, acuérdate, que si había un tigre, pararse súper recto como para mostrarse imponente y gritar. Pero decían, ojo. Puede que esté asustado, pero no grite con susto porque eso lo incentiva a un ataque. No grite a medias. Grite con toda la seguridad y toda la fuerza como, lo, el, como el grito más brusco que pueda haber. Entonces, de pronto es está como ahí, si ellos... pero lo chistoso es que acá es con la mirada. Sí. O sea, es... es una mirada de cuidadito. Es como que ellos, ellos huelen la inseguridad. Uh -huh. Sí. Gaby dice, yo no logro controlar ni a mi gata, pero según él, eso es lo que se hace. Ah, entonces toca mirar, mirarlo mirada fijamente. Desafiante. No, pero desafiante no, porque entonces lo invito a pelear. No, una mirada, ¿cómo fue que dijo Gaby? Mirarlo con toda la fuerza ¿Con y decirle fuerza? con la mirada, yo mando. Pedo. Yo no sé cómo yo miraría, mírame con mirada, yo mando. No, pues el caballo, Casi ahí sí relincho. se lo comió, sí. Casi relincho ahí. No, pues ahí sí se antojó pues, el jaguar no, de comer el caballo. Es como un hombre caballo? ¿Qué? <ríe> Nunca he probado eso. Quiero saber a qué sabe. No, ellos de pronto dicen lo mismo. Uy, no, carne caballo, no. Eh, sí. ¿Sí a lo de carne caballo? No, sí a todo. A ver. <risa> Pero sí, esos tips que dan. Yo creo que esa es la manera de decir no hay cómo. Intente, 
pero es muy difícil. Gaby, pero la pre el, quien estaba enseñando esa clase era de familia... ¿Huitoto? ¿Huitoto? ¿Huitota o Huitoto? como dice uno? ¿Huitoto? O sea, por lo menos había como un... Eh, uno puede decir, no, pues, es que... Me, me, o sea, él podía decir como, no, miren, a ver, mi abuelo, mi tatarabuelo casó, era el cazador de la tribu de jaguares. Y esta es la información que nos pasó a nosotros. Pero yo les, les creo, o sea, lo que tú dices, ellos han convivido mil veces más con jaguares que uno. Pues ellos, pero no sé si este profe, este profe que de pronto vive en Suba, o sea... A ver, miremos qué dice Gaby. Eh... Ese era mi dato inútil. Gracias por venir a mi Red Talk. ¿TED Talk, de pronto? De pronto. Sí, Red Talk suena... No sé a qué suena. A ver... Eh... No, no encuentro. ¿Qué no encuentras? No, googleé. Como estaba tratando de buscar como huitoto y como sabiduría alrededor de los jaguares, pero. Sí. Difícil encontrarlo. Gaby, y solo porque, pues, para saber yo qué esperar con Fer, y es que esas clases eran como tradicionales, o sea. Cosmología Huitoto era como una, una, una clase como, ay, hoy tengo, ay, pucha, hoy tengo educación física, matemáticas y cosmología Huitoto. Pero la verdad muy chévere así. No, sí, pero o no, a uno le pueden enseñar cualquier cosa, a uno no, le no, pueden no. enseñar eh, los metales que se utilizan para las ollas. Y es como, wow, qué chévere, los metales para las ollas. O sea, a uno le pueden dar cualquier pedazo de información. Es chévere, la información es atractiva. Gaby dice, era el hijo del jefe espiritual de la tribu Eso. y él lo había sido por muchos años. Ah. Él nos dijo que él sí había visto varios. En Licheo, uno elegía entre religión o huitoto. Mm. Chévere. Chévere que esté la opción. Bueno, pero entonces hay, este, esto era la, la información que yo necesitaba. Ahí, o sea, uno dice, ah, bueno, si me lo dice esta persona... Sí. Sí. O sea, esa persona sí puede decir, miren, yo he visto más aguares que ustedes. Sí. No, y la verdad, si uno ya ve un jaguar, pues ya... Intente si uno está todo diciendo, eso, sí. No, pues me, me voy a morir. O sea, si me voy a morir, pues ¿qué me quita? O sea, no me quita nada verlo, verlo con fuerza, ¿cómo es que era? Mirarlo fuertemente. Mirarlo con toda la fuerza y decirle con, con toda la, la mirada, fuerza yo y mando. decirle pilas, pilas que usted no sabe quién soy. No. Ese, el único momento en el que sirve usted no sabe quién soy yo. Es con, el es con un jaguar. Mm. O con un tigre también. Mm. El único momento. Sí, pero si ya uno está ahí, pues, pucha, pues intentar lo que se pueda. Zapatearla con las eh, Las chancletas. chanclas, usted no sabe quién soy yo, mm, pegarle Gritar, en el hocico, sí. no, pero pegarle en el hocico, no, uno no ha entrado a discusiones. Margo dice, eh, está quedando precioso ese retrato. Muchas gracias, Margo. Ya, ya lo vamos a acabar dentro de poquito porque me gusta, me gusta lo abierto, lo fresh, que se puede sentir, lo fresquito. Lo fresh. Lo fresh. Mmm... Gaby dice, el otro truco que recuerdo es que si una embarazada quería tener un niño, que coma frutas alargadas y si quiere niña, frutas redondas. Y a las profesoras les sirvió algo, as, algo sabía Isaías, dice. No, Gaby, yo cualquier cosa que sea una apuesta del 50%, no la creo. Cualquier cosa. O sea, si a mí pero me igual dicen, de nuevo, pues uno respeta que eso sean las uno creencias amor, de ellos. Uno respeta, pero uno no puede fundar una creencia en una apuesta del 50. Uno no le pueden decir, si hace, si hace esto es niño y si hace esto es niña. Estoy seguro que estadísticamente las señoras que comían, ¿qué era? Fruta alargada. 
No, fruta alargada para hombres, sí. A las y de fruta, fruta alargada y le, salió, y le salió niña fueron como, ay, lástima. Ah, ah, qué vaina. O sea, yo estoy seguro que de 300 bebés que nacieron, uno decía, mmm, curiosa la estadística, hay 153 niñas y 147 hombres y van a, o sea, va a ser 50-50 toda la vida. Así uno coma solo banano. O sea, es decir, a mí me encantaría si eso era, si uno dice, vamos a comer banano, solo banano, solo banano, todo hombres. No, esa sí me cago, esa sí yo digo, no, ahí sí, chao, ahí sí estoy como con el, el medium, ahí sí digo, no, pues ya me cambió la vida, pero no, cuando es 50%, no, pero si uno ya dice, bueno, si este es el escenario del 50%, y eh, mi universo de, 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 ¿cómo se llama? Como las personas en una encuesta, mi universo eh, son 150 mujeres, y todas comen banano, y, to y nacen 150 bebés, eh, hombres, hombres, Ahí sí, yo digo, chao, ya des el, el, descubrieron el secreto de la vida. O sea, ¿cómo así? ¿Era tan fácil como comerse una fruta redonda o una larga? Eh, I don't know what this means. Ok. Liat said, Nicolás, did you ever make friends with the giant metal ball? Oh, no, that's the video that I... That I um... Oh, I was like, what is it? Stop it, you can't. Don't even, don't, you're not, are you kidding? I hope you're kidding. Don't tell me that's like an NPC. That there's something that you can do with, with that NPC. No, I've been to a couple of places in the map where, yeah, this stupid. Oh, that's the one you, you, you. Yeah, this uh, stupid metal ball appears. And yesterday sorry, it was. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday it was just like, I was just, I genuinely was like, oh, look at this view. I want to stand. Oh, look, at there's this message. But I was super chilled. I wasn't even like. And that's why I wasn't aware of my surroundings. And of course, of course, metal ball. <laughs> mm. Liad said, no, you can't just, just kill it. I haven't been able to. Like, um, if you keep going in that area, you can actually, you know, I started looking at the messages and I was like, of course, there's more of this. Um, and I actually tried to hit it, but I was never, I, I was... More concerned about running away than hitting it. And Leah said, they aren't NPCs. Oh, ok, ok. Uh, Gaby dice, yo no le creo, jajaja, ja, ja, pero ahí aporto mi poco conocimiento, jajaja. Ja, ja. Sí, pero... Eh, todo el conocimiento sirve. Ayer aprendimos un montón, yo... No, pues lo del ja y lo que digo, lo del jaguar, pues, ¿qué, ¿qué le quita a uno? O sea, no, pues no. ya uno en plena selva y un jaguar... Uno dice, no, pues lo voy a mirar fijo porque es que... Pues todo lo que se pueda hago. O me va, o sea, o me va a comer o de pronto la mirada fija me ayuda. Sí. Pues, y si lo va a comer a uno, lo va a comer a uno, si lo mira bien o si lo mira fijo o si lo mira mal. Entonces, pues, ¿ya qué? Mirarlo así. ¿No? Mírame fijamente. Hasta cegarlo de pronto. Hasta comerme. <risa> Eh, pero sí Yo ayer que me vi con mi mejor amiga Le conté los ¿De datos de, No Datos del Estábamos en una fila Sí Y le dije que cuál creía que mordía más duro mm -hmm. No, es que es súper importante pasar El cocodrilo del Nilo Un tiburón blanco O un tigre Ella pensó que el tiburón mm. Y le dije que no porque el cocodrilo el Nilo mm. muerde con 5000 PSI mientras Estás... la ah, mordida volviste. humana ¿Quieres volver a... es de máximo 200 ¿Lo volviste a buscar? PSI. No, no, no. Ah, te lo aprendiste. Todo eso me, o sea, lo, me ya acordé. Es, esto ya son cosas que te Ya es parte de mi conocimiento. Sí. Me verás allá en Menorca. ¿Sabían ustedes que...? Mm. <risa> sí. Ok, so I think I'm going to be done. Okay. Yeah, I think so. It's nice. So, are you up. done or are you gonna be done? I think I'm done. Okay. Yeah, let's let's. Because you said I think I'm gonna be done. Well. And that in you can mean, I mean I'm done, or it can be I'm, I'm gonna work right for after we, uh, finish. eight hours more. I'm not saying right after eight we finish. Hours more I'm gonna. Eight hour, hours more. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't. Okay. <laughs> Your brain did shrink from COVID. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And in the last days, more. I mean, maybe 
It's like, no. Anyways. Anyways. Um, so I think we're good. I think uh, this is fresh enough. This speaks about light. It speaks about the traveling of light. Um, there are some areas where it is all, it's always about paint. For me, it's always about paint. And if paint configures a forehead, great. But to me, the first thing that I have to speak about is paint. And um, so there's a lot of like lush kind of buttery paint. There's a lot of more kind of abstract areas, which I really like. I like to always offset those, those two. Um, I don't always want to feel like paint has to say something like uh, my objective is always to make paint look like X, Y, or Z. Like it doesn't, that to me doesn't really matter. So paint can look like paint. Uh, that's the sort of painter that I am. There's a ton of other painters that say, no, 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 I have to paint this and make it look like leather, or I have to paint this and make it look like fur, or I have to make it look like feathers, or I have to make it look like any, like skin. Um, that has never been something that I'm I'm about or I'm interested in. So I much rather um, say hair through paint, but it'll always be paint. First and foremost, it's paint. So if I can say it like this or like this, and I usually like to have two separate hemispheres, mm, when the form gives me a chance to do that, uh, just so that I can have two chances at, at portraying the same thing in a different way. So I like that this is brushier and it's kind of stringier and this is blockier and far more abstract. I, I really like this this little bit of paint down here. Um, and uh, and that's about it. And I think that I'm clearly painting light. Like that's very, very obvious, I think, through through the painting. There's a hopefully this vertical push of the traveling of light, hopefully. And uh, as far as the substrate, I think we're taking advantage of that kind of scratchy quality that you can get while you're um, putting those initial layers and how it just builds up to more like fleshier paint. Fleshier, I don't mean that I'm painting flesh, but just more fleshed out, like th there's a body to it. Um, so having that range, like some of this, some of that, uh, some of that creaminess, uh, these parts where I scratched out the, uh, the paint to gain access to some of that stained, but, um, you know, kind of original feeling of that substrate, uh, having all of that, I feel it's, it's, it's really nice. It adds, I think all those things add up to, uh, to a very kind of nice full painting. It just, it feels full, like full in terms of, uh, richness. So I think it's good. I think this is good. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, let's see. Leah said, I do really love this painting. Thank you, Leah. Mary S. said, beautiful. Camila Ogerman said, it's wonderful. Mike Richin said, turn out lovely, especially the shapes slash colors in the mouth area. Oh, thank you. Yeah, those are nice. Those are very, th that, that's the moment where we had like the richest, um, either uh, uh, reflected light, but also like the uh, accent of those reds. So I tried to be very um, uh, mindful when I was doing the other areas just so that I wouldn't use my red so much so that when I introduced it there, it, it was, it would, you know, gra have like enough of a punch, not like a super loud punch, but enough that it would feel different, like a little bit different. Javi have said, great job today. Great conversation. Thank you. It's always. Been, it's been a super busy couple of days and really needed this today. Thank you and have a safe trip. Trip. Thank you so or much, thrip. Javi. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be, so this is uh, for everyone. We're not going to be here for two weeks. So we hope, we wish we could say it's two weeks of us just um, having what I would consider to be a well-deserved vacation. But Because yeah. we didn't vacation last year. No. Uh, we didn't go out anywhere. I mean, we were doing the live no, stream we hadn't, like we the 28. We haven't vacationed for two years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Because um, the last vacation we went to is was with our uh, Samuel Fer. Yeah. They and uh, the that was 2019. Hours. Yeah. That was October 2019. Yep. Yeah. So we haven't really gone out. I wish it was vacation, but a lot of like the times that uh, we have to travel, certainly the times that I have to travel, it has to do with jobs and has to do with uh, work. And my priority when I have a workshop will always be the workshop. Always, always, always. I always feel like the first thing I have to do is do a good job. Like first thing, most important thing is just do a good job. So, you know, they never quite feel like vacations. They, 
they are just jobs somewhere else in the world. And it's amazing that you get to meet people, the scenery changes, everything, but it's still very much so work. Still, and that, I think that that's the, the most responsible way to approach, yeah. you know, what is what is essentially that. Um, so, but, but the truth is we're not going to be here for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and maybe, I was going to say, maybe we're not going to be, like the Monday we arrive, we yeah. arrive on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. But, I don't know if I'm going to be able to have the visual correspondence for that Monday. You can take that extra week. That or for the next Monday. Yeah, because yeah, I was that extra thinking that maybe I could do it if I, like in the in the um, uh, Menorca trip. Yeah. But then I would have to make room for that. Yeah. And then I would have to travel with the thing that I right, do. Right, and right. also that would limit me to do something specific. Like, for example, if I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but if I do... Uh, carving, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I don't want to limit myself to that. Right. So I think that uh, the, the, that Monday that we arrive, we're not going to have the visual correspondence, but the next one we would. Do you know what's the cool thing about us not being sponsored or not working for anyone? That we're the one who yeah. manage our time. This is our time. And, yeah. and, um, and we have to be like, we're not being lazy. Like, no. That's... <laughs> The reason that you would take longer... No, we're super hard working. Is like because, we're here always. It's because it's super difficult to make those things meet for that day. Mm -hmm. But um, but we're going to, you know, th during that week that we're back, we're going to be back. So that's that's going to be a good thing. Uh, we'll let you guys know how, how that trip was. Oh, and also, um, as you said yesterday, uh, we're going to be posting things. I think so, yeah. On our uh, Instagrams. Maybe I'm going to be sharing some stories while cool. you do the workshop. So oh, if you're interested in that, nervous. you could see, uh, you could you could check out our Instagrams yeah. just if you want to. And I just saw that Catherine said, I just joined way too late. I'll have to watch delayed. Result is beautiful. Have a good journey. So Thank I you. would use this as an excuse to remember you guys. If you want, you could click the bell. You could subscribe and click the bell. And that would make sure that you would never be late to our streams because you would always be notified. Yes, Catherine. Yes, Catherine. <laughs> please ring the bell. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But thank you, everyone. And the time that we're um, that we're not going to be here. Um, you could rewatch. If you want to rewatch videos, if you want to. Honestly, we don't get anything from older videos. We only started being able to monetize like two years into the videos. So... You know, any view that comes from, you know, any of the first two years of our painted lives, uh, we don't get anything. No, we don't so, have. Yeah, yeah that so, wasn't. So when we say, oh, rewatch stuff from before if you want, um, we're not saying it for, you know, because, oh, that's going to give us more views. Uh, no, no, no. That that ship sailed. So we we missed that. And no, we, I mean, and even if we wanted to, we wouldn't have been able to get um, uh, to monetize those those videos. So, um, no, we, we are saying it just for, you know, hey, if, if there are weeks that you want to check out, maybe weeks that you didn't realize that you haven't watched, just, you know, if you have some time, just take um, and and if you miss us like we are going to miss you, um, you can put some of those videos. Yeah, but I was going to say yes. to clarify, yes, those videos are monetizing right now. No. Yes. No. Nicolás. No, no, no. I'm I, sure. I put them. No, no, no. So let me explain. The views we had. Yeah. aren't translated to money but the views the new views we have oh. are translating to money oh. but i mean it's a video it can be a video that maybe means one dollar to not us even not Cause, even because yeah because what i wanted to say is since the moment we started monetizing since yeah. that date we can monetize everything we've done but that meaning that the new views are going to translate to money Oh, but, but not the old. Can I tell you something though? Tell me. Because I don't, I don't really look at those um, metrics or those uh, nothing. All I know is that you know we get this small amount of money, whatever you know, every month. But um, when I have looked at how the money is kind of discriminated, there's never old videos. No, never. Is it? That's why never. I'm saying like every it, month. We always get like, hey, this video you got fifty cents. And hey, this video you got, you know, five dollars. Yeah, $10. that's why. That's why I'm saying but like the yeah, the count never. of views doesn't yeah. like that doesn't convert into money yeah. for us, but just the new views. So it's okay. funny because it's sometimes like this video uh, 
meant 20 cents to you cuz yeah. someone gave a a, a a watch. View. Yeah, like a view. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, honestly, the way I've noticed and I'm not scared of saying this, um but the way I've noticed our channel beha behaves is that because we do stuff almost every day, you know, we will get views that come from the first two or three days of that video or two days maybe. Oh, and then, and then it's it stops. Like, then yeah. it like literally stops. It like dead halt. Like nobody rewatches or there's nobody saying like, oh my God, we just discovered this. And, you know, suddenly you get a thousand more views or something like that. No, no, no. It, like you can tell the character of our um, of our small channel because of how those views are are actually like represented. And it's always like, hey, there's like this small group of people that watch it and then it stops. Mm -hmm. And then next video they watch it and then it stops. And next video they watch it and then it stops. But it's never like this, you know, big this number that, you know, Ex or bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. It slowly grows or exponentially grows. It never does. It never ever does. And you know what? I'm not saying this like wanting for it to grow. I think it's it's just is what it is, and I like it. I don't mind it. I think it's nice. I think it's nice. So yes. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, you you're all being super nice in the comments. Oh. Uh, wishing us a safe oh, and happy trip. That's great. So thank you so so much, and yes. we'll see you in some weeks. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you. Thank you, guys. Oh, wait. Bye. Okay. Wait. Bye. Oh, wait. <laughs>